Peace and greetings, family. I'm Brother Yusiku Ill, and I want to welcome you to the Ringing Stone Network. And once again, um, the Ringing Stone Network is um, bringing you a show that's on the cutting edge of the new energy that's coming in to and on this planet. And, you know, we've kind of gotten away from emphasizing nationality or who we was born. And I had a conversation with a brother today, and I was like, look, I don't want to argue with you anymore. You know, because there's a certain energy that's coming, and if you're in tune with it, and then it engulfs you and it carries you away like a genie on a magic blanket. So what I want to do, I want to bring to you, brother, from uh, Columbia, South Carolina. I spent some time this weekend uh, dancing around a fire with this brother. Brother Curtis Haru, brother, are you there? Peace and blessings, and welcome to the Ringing Stone Network. Oh, this brother, how you doing today? Good vibes, man. How you doing, man? <laughs> I'm wonderful. I'm truly wonderful, <laughs> and I'm blessed. Honor, uh, honored to be here today, brother, for the for the opportunity to, uh, to guest uh, host. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you. And hopefully, you come back again and again and again. You know, keep oh, bringing yeah. us that information. So what I want you to do, give the people a little bit about you, and then we'll bring your guests in. And y'all, it'll be y'all. Y'all can take it and do what you do. All right? Okay. Good stuff. Again, greetings. Hello. Say my, hello. Say my greetings. Uh, like I like to say, good people, my people. Uh, today, thank you all for coming in and listening. Uh, my name is Curtis Onyango Haru. Uh, I am the CEO of Akuna Matata Unlimited, where we sell uh, African clothing. Uh, primarily Kenyan, um, and something called vibrational therapy, uh, cultural discourse, and I'm also a, a college instructor. Um, we can find us on hakunamatataunlimited.com, where we can see some of our apparel and some of the things that we do in the community. Um, we just launched it, um, so getting together, come check us out. Um, Instagram page is curtis.haru. We can find me at, and today we're looking forward to diving into an in-depth conversation about um, reality, spirituality, health, um, growth, what is spirit, and uh, open source spirituality. What is that, and what, what does it entail? The Ringing Stone Network South changed the world. As Baby Girl said, the stone is like a ring of a bell, opening the minds and the hearts of the people to the hidden knowledges that elevate the listener. Here at the Ring and Stone Network, our stones vibrate the message of commerce, spirituality, health, and truth. And we share it under culture. A message that is carried out by our host and our special guests that come in and share with us. You can follow and subscribe to the Ring and Stone Network from www at blogtalkradio.com backslash Ringing Stone Network. You can also find us on iTunes. Seven Bowmore is a widely known spiritual teacher committed to the universal transformation of humanity and the evolution of all being. After writing and distributing his book freely titled The Code to the Matrix, he has been on a nonstop mission of developing a step-by-step spiritual activation and interactive enlightenment via various innovative platforms such as the website, SecretEnergy.com. Starting in 2009 with his development of his first social network, he began instructing what is now thousands of an ever-growing community through various courses, online, video presentations, and radio shows, assisting a wide gambit of seekers worldwide. Seven began to develop and hone in on various techniques proven that has proven to be effective for spiritual, mental, and physical expansion of others. For thousands of active inherent globally, Seven has now launched the university, which is a virtual institution which features a vast curriculum presented in stages which aims to take the student from neophyte to adept. He currently resides in Costa Rica and is dedicated full-time development to secret energy, infusing his knowledge with his experiences. Secret Energy has designed is designed in a framework centered around the core principles of communication, connection, and open source spirituality. Seven Bowmore, everyone, thank you for coming out today. Seven, are you with us? All right, Holness, uh, is everyone able to hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, brother. Okay, that's perfect. It's perfect. All right, all right. 
it's uh, great to be on. And uh, yeah, thank you, brothers, for for that beautiful introduction. And uh, we're definitely looking into to getting into this tonight and, and seeing where this takes us, you know, going to the depths and to the heights and, and uh, really formulating something that's going to be able to give people what they need in order to go into 2016. Of course, we want to get some questions answered from all different levels and dynamics. And then more importantly, we want to make the connection with everyone. Obviously, there, there's people that are coming on this line from different walks of life, and there will be people who mm-hmm. listen to this message in the future. So my intentions mm-hmm. remain to be as clear as possible and to continue to push this message as strong as we have for the last six, seven years. And then also, as always, do something dynamic. This phone call reveals some secrets, some stuff that's not known. And, yeah, and just get the energy up and get ready to do this as a people, as a nation, uh, as a world, as a cosmos, et cetera, and, and keep pushing it from there. Awesome, uh, I will awesome. say, you know, Again, just for, like for a brief – okay, go ahead. <laughs> I, was, sorry, I guess brother. I didn't put any introduction in there sometimes. Excuse me. I, I kind of come in like everyone knows me, but that's not the case. But in just, you know, a brief um, explanation of who I am is I, I've been delivering this message amongst the community mm-hmm. for six, seven years, make primarily online. I have built some pretty amazing websites and released some massive information just from from different aspects, Um, books, videos, you know, things that are rare to find. I put a community together. We got a a few uh, apps out there. And primarily what we deal with is advanced spirituality. But now our network is uh, also encompassing other arenas such as uh, finances, um, mental stability, um, mm-hmm. everything that you can think of to get you into a greater level of success, because all this stuff, it does connect. There's, there's to me, when someone says spirituality, as if it's some kind of subject or just something specific that we're going to talk about, I really don't understand that. To me, spirituality is everything and feels everything. And we are encouraged at times to find the blueprint within the things that we're experiencing in life to see how they connect to our, our spiritual aspects of being but also to remember who we are as physical and spiritual beings that we've been designed to be the bridge between those two worlds. And at any point where we cannot bridge those worlds, then we, fi- then we find separation from our ancestors. We find separation from the land of the afterlife. And so one of our primary goals is to bridge that again, to, to begin to connect humanity to those mysteries, because obviously if there's things such as death, that people don't know what's going to happen when that, when that occurs. And, and there's all these risks, in between their what they know as their knowledge versus who they truly are, then there's going to be a disconnection within. And that can cause a, a wide array of confusion and different circumstances that will be unpleasant. So what we want to do is we want to get everyone into understanding themselves more. I use that term personally because I feel like if a person understands first, that means gets themselves together, then they can do the greatest things for others. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Perfect, 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 perfect. Again, I want to say thank you, Aunt Mom. Again, from brother, I'm one of your avid uh, listeners and practitioners of uh, some of the things that I've learned from the website and other places. And like you said, the website that he has, uh, the Open Source Spirituality on uh, SecretEnergy.com, like you said, the resources that are there, you find them nowhere else but on the on the website. So definitely uh, go on to SecretEnergy.com, uh, register and become a member and start to dive deep again and understand uh, who you are, what you are, and all that around you because because it reverberates like the ringing stone network, the ringing stone, the sounds, it reverberates, um, transcends time and sound uh, in the body and everything. It penetrates. Um, So definitely, um, without further ado, I want to go ahead and get into the the podcast and uh, bring to you uh, raw information from Brother Seven and uh, just dive into it. And uh, if, you don't, if you have a, a time or an allotment, you want to start 45 minutes, and I would take a break, get questions, um, let us know what order you like to get in, but we can go ahead and set that up and move forward. For sure. We could take a, a break at the top of the hour. That's always good for people to refresh and let the brain cool down. And, you know, I will tell people, you know, there's a lot that's going to be transmitted. So you got you always have your recording to go back to. So if you can't grasp something fully, uh, it is good to just move on and let your brain stay in the, in the zone and just vibe mm-hmm. with what you what you really understand and what you vibrate with. And then everything else, just let it pass through you. And, and it probably will make some sense later, as it always does. 
You know, I try to keep people out of the brain gym, like just all the thinking, 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 because we are moving Mm -hmm. into the all knowing phase as the brother was talking about the big transformation that's actually going to be, well, actually not going to be, but is occurring right now. It's just gradual, like mm-hmm. age, right? Mm-hmm. You just never see it until one day the hip break or something. And you're like, oh, man, I must be old. But uh, actually how this works is, is that it's a ramping up process. That's how the earth has always been. The reason why, you know, it starts off at something like even lower than 7.83 hertz, which is the Schumann resonance, is that's the frequency things can grow on. A lot of people are looking for this high 20,000 hertz kind of lifestyle and they don't realize that that is so erratic that no seed can actually take germination on something like that. So the reason why we experience some of many of the things that we see happening on Earth right now is because it is one of the more denser frequencies. But that also means it's, it's durable. It's long. It has a lot of memories, and it can take you through all the experiences that are necessary for you to grow up into a complete tree. But that doesn't mean always everything is going to be what we call good. And in fact, it actually trains you how to merge the whole concepts of good and bad and to move on to a harmonic horizon rather than confusing what both of those two poles are actually uh, capable of doing. And of course, we'll talk about that as we get more into the conversation. Really, you know, this is one of those times to where, especially for those that are listening, if you have a question, I'm sure that uh, the host is going to open up the the chat room at some point for questions to be Mm -hmm. asked. This is one of those times where you want to be getting your notepad and pen out and then have your question already lined up if that's something that you want to know about. And then in addition to that, for us, you know, building on this conversation today, there is nothing that's off limits. Uh, in fact, we, we try to breach as many boundaries as possible and, and, and shine light and the perfect black into every single area that, that needs to be delved into in order for us to get some clarity. So that's what we're talking about. So as the brother said, we're going to go ahead and launch right into this. You know, I'm not sure mm-hmm. if there was a specific space that, you know, we were going to start in, but yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I'm trained to go. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. 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 Okay. Well, we'll start off with, um, well, as our, our, our listeners today, we mainly have, uh, Aboriginal, uh, and, um, of the African descent of uh, people that are listening. So was from all ages and other creeds that listen to, but the predominantly is, uh, message going out to the Aboriginal or, uh, melanated community. Um, so with that okay. being said, and knowing thyself, diving into self first and then expanding from others, what what is some of the so I understand from uh, following you, you're from uh, Detroit, um, right here in the USA, and uh, you went through some of the same uh, filtering processes to make to, make, to, um, to dive into your consciousness and, and 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 expand out. And what what was the some of the initial problems that you uh, well hurdles or obstacles that you face just being in your skin uh, in, in this lifetime and expanding out from there and and what are some of the far reaches and how did you understand what is what is spirit? Okay, well, go good question. That. Obviously, it's quite broad, so it, it kind of demands that I give a little bit of background of, you know, what exactly is my makeup and how did I come to this specific position of, of being so adept at spiritual knowledge, but not just the knowledge mm-hmm. itself, but also the application. Like I'm deep into mm-hmm. the physical also, like how you actually mm-hmm. get the activation going on. Can't really deal with the pipe dreams and the, the, uh, the non-vivid parts of reality, like, you know, things that mm-hmm. are not solid because it still demands mm-hmm. that, you know, we feed our children, we take care of our grandparents. <laughs> There's a lot of mm-hmm. physical actions that actually have, take, have to take place. So if you don't have the wherewithal, then, you know, it, it's the struggle. And obviously... I think even if you look at the Polish, there's a struggle. There's a struggle everywhere you go. So if you definitely mm-hmm, make it mm-hmm. specific to your, your, your race, then you just get more specific. So, you know, it, it's right. good to right. do that at times in order to, to delve into the environment that you're in personally. So what I'll say, mm-hmm. obviously, I was born in Detroit. I was raised in California. Uh, my mother was, was uh, in the movement. And, you know, and during that time, and obviously in Detroit, that was a hub for a massive level of, of, of uh, <laughs> you can't even just say it's consciousness, it's just all around <laughs> worldwide effect and experience because you had the music mm-hmm. industry, you had the car industry, you had, uh, you know, the brothers coming out, Nation of Islam and, and, and Elijah Muhammad, and, um, mm-hmm. and you had Malcolm, and you had all of that going on in that melting pot. So my mom was in her prime during that time. She actually was a supermodel, so... She did uh, have the opportunity to speak with many of the brothers and, and to really connect with the knowledge and, and start to apply that. But my mom is, you know, she's really serious about what she does. So what happened was, is that we were really immersed in this. Uh, and then it was the Islamic community. Uh, and then where, when there was a split between uh, Farrakhan and Wallace D. Muhammad, 
Um, she went the wall of D. Muhammad five times a day, um, Malcolm X side of things. So that was virtually Wahhab Islam. And then she kept merging that way. So, so you know, I would actually be in the, the mosque with, you know, with Arabs more so than, than with the brothers for a while. And then, you know, when we went to San Diego, she kind of got back in with the brothers because they also had a, um, a, a mosque that was, you know, abiding by that five times a day, et cetera. So what I got a chance to see when I was younger is a very rigid form of spirituality. And that was really mm-hmm. my, my early beginnings. And then my mom, you know, whether it was the, you know, how brothers was, was just, you know, acting with beautiful women as they always do. And, you know, mm-hmm. just the, the lack of substance that began to occur when the community started pulling apart during the bankruptcies and those kind of things. My mom started looking for another much more expansive uh, um, level of her own consciousness because her search was personally to, to get a deeper and closer connection with God. They got a lot of our mothers consider God as their husband, especially when they're raising children mm. by themselves. Mm. So mm-hmm. the closer those relationships can be, then they feel like the more empowered they are to do something about their situation in, in the great wild beast, which, of course, is any Western country. So what happened mm. was is um, we were pretty much isolated because she did have the knowledge. So she, we were isolated from doing things like even going to school. We homeschooled. We didn't celebrate holidays, Christmas, you know, all the games that were played we didn't really take part in those kind of things. And obviously as a youngster, that was a extreme blow. Like it is very extreme for a youngster to experience something on that level because you're seeing, you know, all the people around you do one thing and then you're doing something else. But obviously those seeds were planted and, uh, and now they're full grown to a certain extent now in my life. But I did go through this process to where I, I, I draw real close to the spiritual world, especially when my mom moved away from, Islam is much and moved into the Presbyterian and the Baptist and the holiness and, you know, at least, you know, 20, 30 different <laughs> churches in, in her wow, search for wow. trying to figure out what was going on. And <laughs> in that, I, I witnessed a lot of spiritual phenomena, because when you're moving through some of these Bible belts and you're moving through these even Pentecostal church, you know, they work in a different way. They work with the ghosts. So in that, you, you'll see some real phenomena go on that people cannot question <laughs> if whether or not something's happening. Now, what's happening is always you know, what needs to be determined. So Mm -hmm. as a youngster, I was also somewhat of a prodigy, except for I didn't have good conduct. So I didn't end up making it into some of the, you know, the higher end schools to to actually let my intelligence fully bud, which I think is a good thing. Instead, um, you know, I just was always so meticulously and logically charting things that I would even understand the different variations of a person's tongues based on, you know, different churches that I have went to. And I was given a lot of books, the Sidiopigrapha, the Apocrypha, and different works that were more encompassing than the Bible itself. Like we were always encouraged to continue to read. And in fact, those books actually became my cartoons since we didn't have no TV and things like that. So I lived, my X-Men were basically biblical characters and, and prophets and things like that. So within a short period of time, I actually uh, gained somewhat of a, um, a real inclination to really dig deep into how you become a prophet. Like, you know, what kind of power was Solomon working with and this kind of thing, but at an early age. So what happened was that I kind of had a slingshot effect though. When I reached about 13 or 14, I was just so tired of, you know, church and so tired of just the whole God thing, I kind of just went right out in the streets. And, you know, my, my life is very enigmatic. Like I, you know, I had certain gang relations when I was younger, mm. as most of us have when we were young, when we were young mm. and, you know, run the streets with a downtown crew. And then, but I always had this <laughs> intelligence because obviously it was just natural to me. I had, when doing homeschool, I had actually completed all the way up to the 12th grade when I was 14 and they didn't allow me to turn the paperwork in because they said, Hey, nobody, you can't, you got to wait till you're a certain age to turn the paperwork in. And, you know, and those kind of things mm. now you even learn that don't even make sense because they got kids in right. college that are, you know, are 13, 14 years old. So anyway, mm-hmm. I was always experiencing life from a very intelligent level, but oftentimes the fly on the wall in some crazy situations. Like I actually did even go through a period of incarceration in my advent into the world and, and figuring out how to get it, how you live. But through that process, mm. actually, <laughs> in, in the, the time where I had to actually uh, sit down for a moment, then a lot of that pre-instruction uh, and, and that, that sediment that, had been, uh, that I had been put in started to bud. So I started to really, really look deeper into the spirituality because obviously the, my lawyer wasn't talking about nothing. Like we didn't, have, we didn't have money to pay this lawyer for this, you know, crazy case I had got. So I started really looking into God for assistance and also, you know, had uh, gotten closer to a lot of the elders. You know, there's a lot of older brothers that are in, um, 
in a joint that mm. will advise you. You know, youngster, you got oh, to, yeah. you know, clean your mind Most up. Definitely. You can't do your time like this. You need to educate yourself. You need to spend your time in, uh, in like you were in the university. So that's actually what I did. I actually went through the, the encyclopedia all the way up to like F or J or something like that until my, um, my book started rolling in. And what I was doing is, is I was actually ordering stuff not only that I had before, because I noticed that I had a lot of stories that other people hadn't heard before. I could connect things that were going on in the biblical traditions that didn't have a conclusion in, in the actual Bible, but I knew the conclusion mm-hmm. to those stories. People always ask me, mm-hmm. you know, where is that coming from? And I'd be like, man, I thought it was in the Bible. So needless to say that I, I started developing a very strong connection and I started actually teaching the word of God while I was inside and, uh, and just sticking with that. And when I came home, I just kind of flew straight for a while. I, I, I went back to L.A., got a good job there. Obviously, I vowed never to return to, to, the, uh, to the dungeon again. And life was pretty much abstract, as it is for most people in that kind of phase. You know, you're just, you're, you know, in the Christian phase, it's like the first step on the ladder. What I would tell people is, is that, you know, I have a lot of data about what goes on in religious traditions and where they exactly come from, all the way from ancient times. But it's important mm-hmm. to see instead of like demonizing things, because you'll find out certain things that is, you know, really strange, you know, if you're willing to accept the truth. But the mm-hmm. thing is, is that it's all a step on the ladder. So what it requires is that you just keep climbing. If you stay on that step or stay in that dogma tradition, then it could be the most damaging versus if you just keep it moving, then you will actually benefit from the what I say is like a buffet, the best of all these traditions. So needless to say, later on in life, I actually got myself into another situation where I had to sit down again. And in that process, I actually waxed very strong. I actually went through everything. I went through, you know, all of Solomon's work, his grimoires. I went through York's work. You know, I went through uh, uh, Rashad Khalifa, the numerical equivalent of 19, the number 19 Quran. You know, I went through a lot of works. But more than that, I was having a high level of spiritual interactions when I was going into sleep or into what I would call uh, what we know now is lucid dreaming because somehow even though I was being confined physically my spirit would not remain confined like so it just would pass right through these walls so once I would go to Mm -hmm. sleep I would find myself often in different planes and within a very short period of time I began to learn how to operate in those planes you know what word to do what you know what you know, how to get into different spaces on a consistent basis, how to actually break dreams that you can't actually get out of generally. So I I became very weathered in the spiritual field. So they would call that more or less an initiate. And through that process, I kind of fell out with the Abrahamic tradition. Like it was one point where I was literally in a direct, direct genuflection with the entities that are part of that field. And I asked about my power, like my personal power. And how I was mm-hmm. instructed was is that basically none of the power was mine. The power came from them. And then I was just ascended into this position that was ma- basically more like a servant <laughs> and that was on call to do whatever I needed to do when it was time. And I would be instructed mm-hmm. on that. So I, I was, because I was still reading, I was still reading about, you know, you know, a lot of the stuff. I started getting into the Eastern traditions and I was reading about, you know, a lot of brothers waxing strong with power that was capable of, you know, making them infinitely small and et cetera. So I made a decision because I was so privy to that world and seeing it as a real thing to actually walk away from it, which I believe is very difficult for anyone that has seen as much and experienced as much as what I've seen. Because the thing is, is that if you're, ha- if you're making any kind of contact, this only solidifies more that you're on this path of truth. So what happens to a lot of people is they mix a lot of different things. Like, let's say, for instance, mm-hmm. in church, there's a lot of different things that you actually will like. Like there's a unification of message. So, you know, you have people on one accord. <laughs> you have like a family so you can go if you get into some trouble. So there's a lot of different things that are naturally to have, the the natural, I mean, good to have for the natural love of life. But then there's a lot of other things such as uh, the segregation, you know, the chosen and the murders and, the, you know, the murdering of firstborn and all these things that should not sit as well to the sober mind. But if a person just, you know, writes it off as, well, you know, this is my family, then they can find themselves into quite a bind. So with me, what I did was is that I decided that I was um, once I saw certain things taking place on the spiritual plane, that I wasn't going to be a part of it. And uh, that no matter how how long it took me to climb, that I was going to eventually find my own power. And it was literally like that, like night and day, I lost a lot of the insights and uh, what you would say is the sevenfold spirit and that kind of power that comes along with the Abrahamic tradition. That was almost like gone overnight. 
And then what I was left with was just a clear conscience because I didn't feel any regret. And I just was looking at the base of a mountain that mm-hmm. I had to climb. And that was mm-hmm. the beginning. And now, uh, you know, I guess we're about 12 years <laughs> later after that point. And since then, you know, I've seen a lot. Like I was in Atlanta for a while and uh, whatever it's called, Atlantis. And I was right there during the, you know, the heyday, like right after the Olympics, you can basically find money on the ground. I mean, it was just jumping in the city and I was meeting a lot of people. And then what happened is, is that at a certain point, I hit a huge, massive wake up, like to a point where it made me get rid of everything that I, that I had. And I was very prominent at that point. And, uh, and I had a huge shakeup, like I just went into a massive activation where for two weeks, my chakras were completely open. And I actually didn't even know at that point what chakras were. But because I had so much spiritual experience, I was able to go through the process of actually interfacing with my oversoul, which at that point I, I took as God. And the process of leading me out of the vortex that I had dug myself in through, into during that process of being in Atlanta and, and all the things that I was engaging in, which are basically fruitless. So now um, where I'm at, because during that process, I received a great deal of information. I received a lot of information about the, the language itself, English specifically, and how it was a code, a coded spell, and how the way we were using it and what the words really meant, if you just look at the words and just literally said it as it really was and found cognates of words that sound the same, then you could unravel an amazing story because the story can't be changed. You can't just give a person a language one day and say, hey, you know what, here's a new, here's a new language, learn this language. The, the, it has to be a transition. So if you know the codes to English, then you actually pull out a story of the history uh, that goes back thousands and thousands of years, all the way back to really around the heretic and demotic script until things flip again into another, another coding system. So what I did was, as I once receiving this information, I mean, it, it just, it really turned over the tables with everything that I thought was going on. And that was a very riveting experience. And a lot of people have been through that massive wake up experience where you alienate yourself from your friends and you could no longer meld with the reality. And you're looking for basically your ticket up out of here because you no longer want to be a part of the world. So I went through that whole process. And in that, I actually left the United States and I came to Costa Rica. I wrote that book called the code to the matrix. I actually made it available for free. It's still online. And what happened was that, that was just all a part of me getting this crystal skull out of my brain about all this knowledge. Because at first, you know, I was a little paranoid. So I felt like the knowledge was going to get me killed. So if I didn't put it out somewhere, then I would just mm-hmm. die with this knowledge. So once right. I put the knowledge out there, I was kind of confronted by my own inner self and asked, had I done my best to really make sure that people got this information? And I could for sure admit that I hadn't done my best because I've seen that before in my life. So what happened was is that uh, I decided to start this website called thewords.ning.com. And within three or four days, the book actually went viral. It had about a half million views on Scribed. And then I had an email box, box full of people not only asking me about situations that I had wrote about in the book, but also bearing witness to what they had experienced in their life and that it was connecting dots mm. for them. So mm-hmm, I found mm-hmm. a place. I found something to do. And, uh, and I started going in and, and, you know, writing these long blogs. Resistance2010.com is about 1,500 very long blogs, digging deep into every single thing that you can think <laughs> about, but real hardcore occultism, like turning nothing down but our collar and many tenses to, you know, how we're going in. Because to me, I felt like that to hold my tongue or to hold this knowledge back would be to my detriment. So I made sure that I could do everything that I could to get people to know exactly what was happening here in this world and the world beyond this one. And so that, that's a, you know, a, a very crude and brief synopsis of what the last 20 or I'm not 20, but maybe 10 years has looked like for me. And then in addition to that, because I, I still learn now, like I keep learning, like I'm not somebody's mm-hmm. guru. I'm not going to sit down and just explain to you what I've been through. I'm still going mm-hmm. So in that, it keeps me really in thinking in real time with what people are experiencing. And also because we eventually found a blueprint. Now, when I say we, it's because I speak in a collective. I don't believe that anything we're doing mm-hmm. is by ourselves. Even breath is an entity mm-hmm. itself. So we're never mm-hmm. alone. It's just about whether we understand how to draw from the powers. And the powers are all over the place. So it's just really about your attitude, your ability to connect, your, reson- your resonation, and also realizing what, energies are coming from things that you're thinking and objects that are around you and just being more in tune with you. And that's really the whole game that's being played right now in the false matrix 
is basically the more things that come out and the more things that just basically distract a person from figuring out how their body works and how their spirit works in conjunction with their mind, then the less they know arcana, which is the highest truth, the less they know Kabbalah, which is resuscitation, when you're speaking to yourself in your own mind, giving yourself knowledge that most men knew not. So when you're, when you're capable of tuning into yourself and tuning out of the reality, which we call just the switch, then you're, you know, now you're, you're at the beginning, you're at the door of yourself. And then walking through the maze of your own consciousness can be very, very uh, riveting. It could be exciting. It could hmm. be an adventure. It could be every single word that you can really put to it. And the thing is, is that when a lot of those journeys, those corridors only fit one person down them. So you end up making those trips yourself. But then there's many areas that you get into that you can actually do collectively. So we really, really promote more mentors. You know, right now, there's this whole thing where, you know, I'm my own master and I'm my own God. And, and that's great. And that's fine and dandy. But there's a lot of things that we didn't learn unless we had mentors or someone who had showed that path to us, especially when we're talking about the youth and, and, and who they need to, to really have as a, you know, as a goal and a beacon to reach and to, to overachieve. Uh, and so what happens mm-hmm. is, is that we come forth, we come forth with knowledge that is not only it's with all I call it with all things considered. It has to be entertaining. It has to be as truthful as possible. Mm-hmm. We have to be able mm-hmm. to connect it to what I call the blueprint, which is the as above, so below nature within everything that allows you to anything you want to know the answer to. You could just start sitting down and thinking about it and start applying the blueprint and then you'll have the answer to it. And then what this does is it kind of keeps you from needing to have some kind of spiritual instructor all the time telling you what to do. But there is, of course, there's a lot of brothers out here and sisters out here and, and, and that are that are have pieces of this knowledge. And those pieces are, are like fitting a big puzzle together for you. The thing is, is that we're so unique. We can't even count on things like reincarnation. Like I don't even understand how a person would come into something unique twice. I think that's something that never ta- was talked <laughs> right. about. That's why we actually forget most of what was going on before, because all this is unique. So I call it one life. You take this life that you have right now, and then you make it a continuum. You transcend time. Like uh, We have to realize that when we're using terms like the age of Aquarius and the golden age, what these mean are actually Saturnalian periods. That's why Saturn is the god of the golden age. And what that means is that time, time as itself, becomes present. And time to us, you know, that's death basically in, in, in our word. That's not, that's right. wisdom. And so it's deep things, heavy things, what's called was or what we call wise. So that kind of weight on, on our souls right now is heavy. So I guess the question that was addressed is what is the spirit? And the, the interesting part is, is that this is, a, that's a great place to start because oftentimes the spirit is confused for the soul kind of runs all into the same category mm-hmm. in English, but mm-hmm. never in Tibetan or Akubulani. And it's like, if you're understanding what the soul is, the soul actually can't def- be defined. It has no coordinates. Mm-hmm. So you can't say the soul is here, the soul is there. You can't, it has no weights, it has no measures. So it actually is the all-knowing state itself. And it has no birth, so that creates a paradox for anyone using thought or thought because they can't actually figure out where it, where it comes from because in their mind, everything comes from something. So what happens mm-hmm. is, so that's the definition of the soul. It's all one, it includes all of us and everything, the animals, the ants and creatures you ain't even seen live in the center of the earth or top of the globe, whatever, you know, so that's the soul. And then as far as the spirit, the spirit is actually fractions or, or fractals, if you may, from the soul. And in, 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 in a tense, it's a lot to do with light. And it's a lot to do with, you know, even in um, jewelry, jewelry, trillion cut, um, the, the cuts you see on a diamond where there's different facets. All those different facets basically are the spirits. And the degrees of the spirit are basically how much of the, the ka or how much of this soul force can you put inside of this vessel and, and it still is able to maintain its presence in the physical realm without imploding on itself or going nuts and self-destructing itself, et cetera. <laughs> and this is, of course, why all knowledge is actually measured in degrees as a, you know, a master's degree, doctor's degree, and then also degrees of knowledge. And obviously in masonry, they measure knowledge in degrees. And then also fire, because that's really what you're dealing with. With The spirit is the degrees of the flame. So it's basically how much spirit can you really hold inside, your, inside of yourself and still remain harmonic with your mind, meaning you didn't go crazy. 
with your, your, your physical body, meaning you know how to get your diet and things together, the Ayurveda knowledge, the Tibetan uh, medicine knowledge, how to keep your body so that it can actually have that much current flowing through it, because we're talking about something very vivid. And if people want to understand, you know, exactly why they may not be experiencing this full-blown cornucopic field where every single thing around you is alive, is that has to do with simply amplification. It doesn't have, it's not that we don't have the power and the ability within us. We have many gifts, the third eye, the pineal, the, the hypothalamus, all these different organs and glands that do different things. But if we don't have the amplification or the power running through our system in order to be able to activate those uh, uh, those components, then they remain dormant. And it's very similar to a thermometer that when it starts coming up, and this in case would be Kundalini, then you have generally control over your lower chakra centers and then sometimes the midpoint of the chakra centers. And that's actually where most people stop. They stop slightly be below where their sexual organ is. And this actually has a lot to do with why the reality is constantly using sex as a way to keep people on a certain level. Because then when you transcend that, when you move into the dantain or move into where the belly button is, now you've actually reached the center of the navel of the body. And then at that point, you can actually begin to stabilize yourself versus dealing with, you know, the, what we would say is the, the, the primal energies, the gunads, I like to call them the goons, just basically the primal energies that have always been responsible for keeping things going in the matrix and on the physical plane. And then you can start moving yourself into the higher states of your own consciousness and realizing what else is out there. So this is an adventure then. And if we spend our time on that, it will rejuvenate us. It will feed us. It will nourish us. And because it's life, it's about life. And more specifically, it's about your life and it's about your transcendence. And so I find this to be a very rewarding path because you never lose. It's not like someone can take away what you gain on a spiritual level and that's the greatest storehouse then to, to put your treasures is within your consciousness and then also really sticking close to truth. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about a full on thing. We're not talking about, you know, this is hypothetical. This is, you know, maybe it, no, this I've seen some things that I just call a Superman by night, Clark Kent by day, meaning that if you walk around in the reality expecting that just because you see a person that has experienced a lot and been on cross different spiritual planes and all that kind of thing that you're going to notice that on them. That's a whole part of the lie. See in the matrix. So the symbol mm -hmm. of the pentagram, the matrix is the spell. It's the actual five base system that encodes the bodies into being things that they really aren't. Right. So what happens is if that, if we only until you move into the level to where those powers are, do you see those powers? So, with me, let's say, for instance, I've graduated my spirit into a certain degree to where it's capable of doing certain things on the spiritual plane. But if you see me in the physical plane, I may just come across as dashing and eloquent, but that's as much as you're going to be able to, you're not going to see me throw lightning from my hands like a Sith Lord. So in that case, a person is never going to really see if they're looking on the physical level, what is really inside of mm -hmm. each being that they're mm -hmm. coming across every single day. And even that person is not fully privy unless they're mining their own selves, digging for the gold in their soul. They're not going to be really privy to what exactly is inside of them, those jewels that are crusted inside of, encrusted inside of them. So what we work to do is we work to polish down those jewels and to sharpen those facets and to find those keys because this message will still be generalized because we're talking to thousands and thousands, if not millions of people. But when you need something specific, you have a unique keyhole in each of your chakras that really require you to take this information and then reconfigure it into a way that works for your system and then put the mm -hmm. key in the hole and allow it to open the door and to release your energies. But what happens, though, is that a lot of those energies, because they've been stagnant, they're misunderstood, uh, people should realize that how your chakra centers even themselves develop is they develop based on the expanse of your life. So... It's not that you're just born with all your chakras, like one to seven, your root chakra is developing. So anything that happens during that period, it gets encased in, in the root chakra, written in the root chakra with lights, which is basically every time you feel an emotion or go through an experience, you leave an energetic signature and you write that signature on the disc. And when you replay that disc, that memory will come back to you. So 
at a certain period, that, that chakra is sealed, and then you move on to another chakra. So what awakening is, is that you unseal, like the revelations is actually the awakening of the, the chakras. You unseal the chakra. Now, when you open that chakra, does it smell like a New York sewer? Because all the stuff that's inside of it has been, uh, has fermented and become distorted. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that still need to be healed in there. Or does it smell like flowers? And that's really how the adepts put it, especially from the Eastern tradition, is that we have chakras, but what condition are these chakras in? So we're encouraged then to go back into these chakras. Heavy work, though. Go back down mm. the maze of our lives and to open these doors that do in tents have phantoms and do in tents have uh, a very negative, let's say, energies within them. But when we open them, we should be prepared to counterbalance a lot of the pain that we felt, a lot of the hurt. We have to be ready to counterbalance that with the diametric energy that's responsible for soothing that. So that way we can reach a state in our consciousness to where we feel comfortable with where we are. Because as long as we feel comfortable with where we are in the now, then what happens is we're able to realize that if we change anything from the past, even to go left when you would have went right, any of that will completely have you in another field, another country, with another person, in a whole different reality. So the biggest thing is, is again, to, to, to balance into what exactly is taking place now and to, to, uh, to grasp yourself and to embrace yourself and to show yourself love. And the situation here is, is that, see, the matrix is web work, so it's, it responds to codes and programs. Your consciousness inside really demands that you actually control yourself and deal with yourself. The only thing that you really have control over truly is your mind. You know, you, you know, we'll exclude body and soul from that, you know, just because those are different matters. But you have control over your mind. And because you have control over your mind, you actually have control over the world as you perceive it. Not necessarily the world mm -hmm. at large, but as how you're perceiving it and when certain things happen, how you react to it. And then that's another thing. You know, if you're always on reactionary, 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 that's a computer. That's actually binary. That's the whole reason why good and evil play the back and forth volleyball game, light and darkness, play the back and forth volleyball <laughs> game with all the citizens that actually come in, denizens that come into the reality until they realize how to stand as arbitrators, how to stand in the center of their consciousness with Cain on one side in the temple, Abel on the other side in the temple. Those are the temples in the head. And to be sitting in there in the corpus callosum rolls up from the, uh, from the uh, spine and to sit into the seat and to really command the vehicle and to say, this is where we're going with this. Because if you just count on, let's say, deep knowledge being on a billboard when you're driving down the freeway or you count on that, hey, if they ever really figure something out, then it would be on the news or maybe the president mm. or maybe the, the minister or anybody would tell us, then you're dead wrong. Because right. either that person will try to go broke bringing that out because that wasn't the time and age for it for the last 100, 200 years for deep levels of knowledge has basically been hidden. You find it on your own generally and within generally. Mm. So getting rid of the whole idea basically that there's not amazing, spectacular things out here that are yet to be discovered by each individual that chooses to make that a part of their life and existence. And not focusing on what CNN or Canaan has always there for you, which is basically the doom, the gloom, the darkness, things are getting worse, because that's the land that that, that information, that knowledge is actually still coming from. It's coming from the past. So we need to look into, okay, now, since I'm here, and taking command also, this is my body, like I'm here, I'm, I got allotments here too. If you don't want me here on the earth, then you need to remove me. So while I'm here, I'm going to get into the deep levels of knowledge. I'm going to get into the elements. I'm going to see exactly how much assistance I can get in this without sacrificing my moral bearing, meaning that you got crystals, you got, you know, there's a magnetic force, you got plants, you got herbology, you got uh, cell salt. So you have all these allies then. So to me, I'm not too interested in just finding my enemies. I went on that whole quest and, you know, I finally figured out who was the big uh, boogeyman behind the door. And it was definitely myself, because what happens is, is that if you give anything power over you, if you say that it's going to be something that needs to change so you can get your way in this world that doesn't have anything to do with you, then you've become a slave to that. And you let that have power over you. Like if I say, 
okay, well, until Donald Trump leaves office, then we ain't never going to – whoa, 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 whoa. Once that starts to occur, now I've given an uncontrollable quotient power over me. Mm-hmm. And that With also applies else. in also just taking responsibility. And this is the thing. you know, We, we work now more to take responsibilities. I don't want to really get into who they are all the time unless it's something specific that we need to know or uncover. You know, so this, this is how we're coming at this. So I, I know that's kind of like an elephant gun, of, uh, and we need to kind of pull out the laser. And, you know, we're coming to the top of the hour in about 10 minutes. But I just want to let everyone know, you know, the range of what we're talking about here. Because when you get – I feel like that I took a download that was about 60 million years, like even almost timeless, into parsecs, like into the light codes and, and all these different kind of things that have actually really no application currently for the physical reality. So in, in many extents, you have to ask yourself, what, what part of that is going to serve you right now? Because that's how you focus. Focus doesn't mean, you know, keeping your mind on like 10 or 20 different things. It means what are you going to need right now? And a big part of what we're doing in 2017 is we're coming, we went spiritual for the last six, seven years. That's we put our foot in that. There's going to be, you know, we got the T-shirt. Like, they, they'll still be dissecting that 12 years from now, wondering how we even figured that out just on the collective. But the truth is, is that where people need assistance the most is under, understanding the matrix and the physical mm-hmm. plane and exactly how success comes about here, how you get closer to sovereignty, self-sustainability yeah. or self-substantiation, like how you interact with those components now because – you know, even if someone's telling me like, you need to eat good food, well, the good food costs a little bit more than the nasty food now. <laughs> and, you know, somebody's saying you need to get good friends around you. And still per capita, it's about, I guess, every 50 people, one person is, you know, got their lights on a bit. So it's about mm-hmm. also looking at those same problems. If we notice in the world that the most successful people, only thing they did was they identify what their problem was. And then they create a solution for it because they realize that all of our problems are very similar. And if you want to find success, you help other people succeed. And how you help those other people succeed is you find the solution to their problem, which becomes the solution to your problem. So a big part of this is not about retreating. It's not about division. It's never, you know, if you're going to separate, you're just going to get picked off like one of these, these uh, giraffes or something like that in, in the wild and in, in outback. Out you know, by some kind of lion, you have to work with how to stick together and how to, to stay and draw closer to, to each other. So, you know, that, that's the power in numbers uh, when, they're, when they're unified. So that's what we're talking about. Okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. Most definitely. That's a wealth of knowledge that you dropped. Uh, let's hop on the last thing you just said. Oh, it's not eight minutes before the peak of the hour. But we said sticking together. Um, we have a lot of people growing up. And um, building the businesses, um, practicing group economics. Uh, I think this is one of the you know, results of group economics, uh, Ring and Stone Network coming together with a common uh, goal, common dream, and then building from there, becoming, uh, like I said, sovereign. I think on one of the other shows you talked about being sovereign in different uh, aspects, from the spiritually sovereign, financially free, uh, mentally free, and, and creating from there, and not, I guess, picking a, a goal, a common goal, or a goal for yourself. And, and striving towards that, um, and not saying putting putting obstacles, uh, seeing things that happen in, I guess in your uh, initial reality, uh, such as the president uh, or president elect now, and not using that as a uh, seemingly an obstacle that you must uh, of overcome. In other in other words, right. but there are many ways to get around that or uh, continue on your path. Yeah, because, you know, the main thing is, is that we did some courses called Celestial Mechanics. And what that means is basically mm-hmm. how to understand what is going on on the planet and in the other adjacent systems that are bona fide. Because, you know, if you don't stand on solid ground, then when it does start shaking, then you're going to fall. So what happens is, is that there are basic principles to how this works. And it has a lot more to do with, I guess they call it science now. But the truth is, is that when you look at a, a clear light, when it shines into a prism, it makes seven colors. And that's through that seven colors, that's actually why we got seven days of the week. That's why we have a lot of different things of how the reality is actually created. But if you look deep into the symbolism, which is actually a rainbow, what it shows you is is it shows you that 
in order and that's that's called harmony because in order for this reality to be as it is that means all those colors must come into agreement with one another and this is actually why you get the story of the fallen angels because it's it's a cognate of this story although very crude and in, in in uh designed to be very dogmatic and very dualistic it's actually the notion that you don't just get let's say red and orange in between that, you get this color that's like a blend of the two. And so what happens is, is that we have this responsibility then as whatever color, if you may, that we're holding up on the spectrum, which happens to do with our vibratory frequency. It has nothing to do with the outside color of the skin pigment. It has to do with the vibratory frequency because to say that every white person is bad is also to say that every black person is good, and that's just buffoonery. Mm-hmm. Like we have to really mm-hmm. see mm-hmm. it as it is, that we are responsible for connecting an entire wavelength. And Mm. that's individually in your life, because if you don't know how to connect with people and how to get people to do what you need them to do, then you can't get anywhere because people are responsible for getting you to where you need to go. So this Mm -hmm. means that the most important thing then to understand is things like life paths, things like using certain, knowing what verbiage, what kind of language, what kind of expression to use when you're dealing with people. And the thing is also, remember, if we are reactionary, then many times you just go into a scenario and then react to whatever based on what happens in that scenario versus planning, premeditating about what you're going to do and what responses you're going to get and how you're going to respond to that. And that's why a lot of this stuff demands for us to just see this as actually serious, because it really is that. Death is not a game. Generally, it just sneaks up on people, so they generally don't think about it. But when you start thinking about your soul and how serious this is, then you may start when you realize that, hey, you need to actually work with more of a harmonic field if you expect to really get out of here. Then it starts to become more entertaining. But if someone is actually just telling you that all you need to do is basically stand up for who you think you are versus who you really are, which is all-encompassing supreme being, then you can get limited to that. And you can get shortchanged in that. And then your energy can only get beyond a certain point. It's like a person that says that they're going to become a bagger versus a person that says that they're going to change the entire world with their invention. Two different things. If I want to become a bagger, that's pretty easy. That doesn't take much energy. But if I want to change the world with my inventions, that's going to require me to learn some things. That's going to require me to sit down not only with myself, but also in the examination of what's going on in my environment and the things that are around me. So when we're talking about finding success in the matrix and even beyond, it actually has a lot to do with that. It has to do with overcoming the challenges that are presented to us. Like, what do we think is the problem? And then step by step, like if someone says to me, I have this problem, because this is when you got to get specific. How do I fit, fix this problem? Then I can give them the solution to that problem. But there's no one size fits all kind of solution for every single mm-hmm. problem. And you, it, <laughs> it requires that you actually go through the learning process and figure out what's really right for you. And so, you know, this is, you know, in the second half, you know, we can get a lot deeper into the actual mechanics to how to make things change, you know, Mm -hmm. what the matrix actually responds to. You know, I think a lot of times, a lot of this knowledge, we're going right by and we're not realizing how detrimental it is that we stick to that until we learn how to do that. For instance, thinking about things, premeditating on things that are negative, as if that does not actually create a magnet for that. The brain works in a very strange way that anything that you focus and you think about long enough, you draw that kind of energy to you. But it's not just that. When you think that kind of way, let's say negative, it also links you. This is a morphogenic field. It links you to others that are thinking that way. So Mm -hmm. not only are you just dealing with your own negative negativity, you also have now plugged into the hive of the negative forces. And so, and that could be anything because when we just test all this stuff, like I just had a meter to put it on your finger and then say, hey, yo, you, you in the negs right now, you're like negative 20. It doesn't really matter what scenario you're actually experiencing to equal negative 20. It just is that you feel that way. So the masters of this are actually capable of keeping their frequencies in the proper range no matter what they're experiencing. And that's what allows them to be open for the diametric force that actually comes behind every single energy, every action, there will be a reaction. So if something 
quote unquote negative is happening for you, if you don't burn up all the energy and, and get distracted, you immediately begin to see how that's working in your favor and how that's basically even something that you had needed to change a long time ago and just didn't know how to make decisions. And now it's blown up in front of your face. So, you know, there's, there's basically a way to, to work with all of this. And why are we doing this? Why should we do this? Because, you know, some people, they, they work um, with fear more, right? Like, so for those people, it's because if you don't get it right, if you don't balance out what's going on with your spirit and get it into the growth process phase, only things like voodoo can tell you how deep and dark and strange the spiritual world can really be from the dismembered souls that end up in those planes because they didn't do any spiritual development. Okay. And that's why even that term, when you say voodoo, people are like, Oh my goodness. Um, what are we talking about? It's scary. <laughs> it's because it's all about the spiritual plane. And it's, it's mm-hmm. not all about roses and, 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 uh, and rainbows and, and, and teddy bears <laughs> in there because you've got different kinds of souls that have been dismembered in different ways. So if a person is motivated by fear, then that's why. Now, if you're motivated by reward, it's actually being able to glide through this and from this reality with all your memories, which is your energy. Like we'll talk about when we come back, if you remind me, and what was found in Kemet with how the world is a motherboard and how you got the circuitry and the stars. And how the memory is the most important component of the planet because that's where the energy comes from. And you know your memories give you energy because if you think of fond memories or when you get old enough to only be able to live on your memories, you'll find that they'll drive you and push you further. But even more importantly, if you happen to lose memory, then it actually, in a sense, makes your entire process through life purposeless you don't remember mom anymore your children mm. your, what will be the purpose so the memory then because that's our most precious thing is what we really need to retain more of and more than anything getting into the all-knowing state to where all the memories are and i'll close with this just in this top half is to remember that what i'm telling you right now it may seem like you need to learn and a lot of people always tell you that hey you already know this so really it's about remembering. It's about putting back on mm-hmm. the members, right? Mm-hmm. So everyone has that. But the truth is also within that is that when we put ourselves in this specific position to really go through the process of, of retaining our memories and, and what's happening in this reality, it's a very mature state because it actually begins to make you a custodian of your ancestral path. And yeah. what's happened in the past and, and, and what needs to, to be rectified. And where that knowledge is, is actually really in the stars, contrary to flat earthers, contrary to a lot of people that, that don't believe in the cosmos anymore, even though it's still moving throughout the sky and it's still affecting things just as the sun affects things and the moon affects things, other stars do the same thing. And what that's yeah. generally called is when you understand the stars, then you know orientation. Okay, now let's look at the word. You're orientated so no navigator selling no cosmos no ocean no sky or nothing is going to be able to do that without understanding the stars which the answer right. what they call the ancestors right so if you don't understand mm-hmm. the stars then you don't understand how they move you don't understand that the big dipper is even the little dipper is actually a quotient of time moving throughout the night you can tell what time it is if you can see the little dipper mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there's a million other things that you can do with the stars but if you don't go through that orientation that means that you don't know where you are. Mm-hmm. Because notice how when you go get a job, they take you to orientation first so you'll know what you're doing. So if you don't mm-hmm. go to orientation first here <laughs> and understand how things are orientated, you get the phenomena of what we're dealing with right now in the reality where 80%, 90% of the people don't even know why they're here and what is here even, right? So moving mm-hmm. from there, once you become orientated – now you can move with purpose because you know already what's going to happen next. There is actually nothing new under the sun. What's lost mm-hmm. is what is the procession of these periods and what's going to actually take place next. And also, where are we exactly in that whole process? And, you know, and that's, you know, things that we can start talking about and in, in getting into when we come forward. So, second half. Yeah. Hey, good stuff, brother. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we're going to top. We had a top of the hour. Uh, it's 9.04. We're going to take a eight-minute break. 
with some music. We might come back a little sooner. Uh, if the, the engineer uh, can uh, rock us with some, some great music. In the meantime, we can take a break, get some water, yeah. and we can come right back. On uh, the Rain Stone Network, you have me as your host, uh, Curtis Saru, and also Brother Seven. Beaumont has graced us today. So we'll see you in about six, seven minutes uh, when we come back. Yeah. yeah. Well, all right, y'all. All right, y'all. We on 55 Bronx, New York. I always knew one day I would shine. Hey. Connect the past to the present, baby, let's climb. To another plateau, shipping Bardo in my chateau. With my eyes focused on the prize. Ain't about a flim flam or wham bam. Hit a grandstand, execute the plan and don't stop. Don't need a rubber band, man. Spider or Superman. Wonder Woman's in the house. Let's ride on the 361. Let's ride. Yeah, I'm on 361. Let's rock. I'm on the 361, baby. Yeah. Let's rock. I'm on the 361. I'm on top of the world. Yo. You know what? Yo, it's gotta be more to this lyrical talk if thanks to the teachers on the spiritual wall. Shout out to Mama Zobey, Dr. Ben, Dr. Plants, who's all Dr. Yard, Dr. Clark. Shout out to all those who changed the rules with the cosmophysic Christian and rock who. And pool, Everest, Optic, Phoenix, and the pillars who rock the colors red and blue. Shout out to the fifth stars who bring the fire. Madonna, Cole, Yo, Nicky, Love, and Samaya. Thanks to all the misfits who took logistics and they switched it up to raise our consciousness higher. Power to the people who know who they are in the age of Aquarius, shooting like a star. Cause we all one, man, under the sun, man. Doesn't matter where you're from, it's who you are. On the three, six, one. Everybody want to know about what this 361 is about. Yeah. Well, let me break it down to you like this. This is what it means to me. You know, uh-huh. this 360 degrees in a circle, you so, know, going full circle, so, so, full knowledge. So, so, knowledge right, is 360 right, degrees right, for some. Right, right, right. But it's time right, right, right. that we stop moving in circles as a people. Yeah. It's time we take it to the next degree. Yeah. That one degree is you. Yeah. That's you taking all the knowledge of your ancestors and everything that you have in the circumference of your body. I show you. You're raising it to the next level. Yeah. Take it into the age of Aquarius, the future. Yeah. On that first degree, and that shoot. Woo. And that's 361. Hey. That's right.
family. Brother Yusiku, welcome back. I give you Brother Curtis Haru and Master Seven. Peace and greetings. Y'all both are back up. All right, all right. Awesome, awesome. Welcome back, everyone. Hope you got your water, some snacks, a notebook. Uh, take notes and just uh, write your questions down. Or we'll put it in the chat box so we can get through to them. I have a few, few of them that came up uh, during the break. Uh, Brother Seven, you're back. For sure, brother. I'm forward. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, excellent. Can you hear? Excellent. Okay. Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. I had, I had three questions that came up. Well, two actually that came up, um, but they actually merged together. So I'm just merging together. Uh, they were talking about. Um, we spoke on uh, this getting away from the matrix. So once you come into this this consciousness, for example, myself, uh, give myself an example. <clears throat> Uh, as if I'm in a classroom, for example, I was um, studying uh, uh, at a particular university, and um, I was being told uh, in, my, in my in my my projects, I was writing, uh, I was going for teaching, and I was writing a curriculum, the course uh, courses for uh, teaching African melodies, Caribbean melodies, and all this great stuff. Uh, you know, because um, I was teaching music uh, in a program for teaching music, and that. Um, that in the where I'm at, um, they said my my chairman professors were telling me I was being unrealistic. Teach the um, the 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 foundation of music before I teach anything else outside of that. And in that, in South Carolina where I am, um, you have something called the Common Core, which is a set outline of curriculum that you must teach in order to uh, be in the classroom. Standards and tests that you have every year. And they were saying in that uh, you you won't you know you can't teach that here basically. So uh, the question was uh, struggling to detach from the matrix as uh, when you come into this consciousness and uh, find out <clears throat> that if you're teaching history and you come into, in, in, into the knowledge about the true history of the nation, and, uh, but you can't teach that maybe at your school or your institution or your job, or it conflicts with your, with your, your knowledge, uh, your, your truth that you have developed or found over time. How do you, uh, it's, how do you detach from that? And I guess going to creating your own um, and doing what gets what you're passionate about when you're kind of relying on the the matrix, as in that's where your finances and money are coming from, uh, your currency um, that <clears throat> sustains your your way of living. Okay. Well, you know, the first thing is is that I, I believe that the definition of the matrix needs to be fully clarified. So that way mm. people can kind of get clear on the entire field. So oh, the matrix, matrix. The, as the word, which is Greek is basically a place where things are cultivated. So you can see the, the, the ma on the front of it mm. and it's actually mm-hmm. tris like a, like a mistresses. So it's basically, mm-hmm. to, it's a pluralization of multiple places where things are cultivated. So obviously there are multiple wombs, wombs within w- wombs, Dreams within dreams, okay? So this also means that a lot of times, you know, what goes on in that classroom is basically a sub-program. It's not the matrix program. It's a sub it's a Western sub-program that mm-hmm. operates mm-hmm. on specific mechanics. So when we define, you know, what, how are we going to get out of the matrix, we need to kind of define that there's the, the overall matrix, which is the womb, which you generally, you know, me, I guess I, I'm a player in the game, meaning that I, I don't really find my existence in the matrix to be such a terrible thing. I got mm-hmm. rid of that whole energetic field because it didn't serve me. So what happened right. is, is that that's also saying then that I have a purpose. That means that I agree to be here. And, and so that allows you to move differently with your energy. But when you're talking about sub-programs, right, these are – Program, matrixes yeah. that have been these are worlds that are, are systems that have been designed on the blueprint of the matrix but things have been changed languages are, are do that tarot cards do that um different types of systems do that there's different changes and variations religions do that so they'll move basically stars around they'll move things into a different position to what they weren't originally and so for a person that is going into something like that, what they have to do is they basically have to devise a plan, which is more of like an exit strategy. Because mm-hmm. either you're going to go into that sub-program and you're going to punch the codes that allow it to respond to you the way you want to respond, or you're never going to get 
from that subprogram what you want out of that subprogram. Mm-hmm. So if you go in there, let's say you got a plan, you got a stretch goal. Within three years, you're going to end up developing your a whole entire music system. But to mm-hmm. do that, you're going to need some of these credentials that the Matrix loves to, <laughs> to say and accolades that the Matrix loves to say are real and authentic. So this is how you build it. You build it then like it's an actual uh, uh, mission, <laughs> like, you know, it's not even, you know, I was going to say mission impossible at times because some of the stuff you go into, you're like, I'm going to, how am I going to be able to do this? And that's how you, you, you accomplish that by moving in, in mysterious ways. So that way you can move with, with the forces that control the order. So I guess that would make us go back again to the stars that the order of the stars actually show you that, let's say, for instance, the sun has a certain level of energy. And as long as you're moving with that kind of energy when it's a specific time, then you can't be impeded. So it's mm-hmm. the same thing even in the submatrix programs that when you do certain things that it wants, then it gives you the response that you're looking for. You just need a plan. You can't be going in there every single day imagining that you're going to change a subprogram that has already been instilled within even the meta consciousness of the people that are participating in it. They generally can't get out unless they want to go get out. The signs and the the knowledge of how to to progress in the matrix has been here since even before I got here, since before you got mm-hmm. here. Like they got mm-hmm. ancient records. So basically it's telling you it's always been here. It's just about whether you actually are on that right path to be able to make it out. And this is interesting because then it's like roulette. And that's why I love my one life concept. Like I'm not trying to see this roulette thing pop around the table again. And then I get landed on a, I don't know, a horse life. You know, I, I, you got to think about how much do we really even know about this matrix and how it operates. It takes a lot of knowledge, serious stuff. You got to go through, real entities, you know, eidolons, you know, large forms that are vast in intellect to begin to manage and control something like this, but you can control yourself. Mm -hmm. So if Mm -hmm. you move with purpose, then it's all about just your objective. How I would handle something like that is I would, again, set out a stretch goal that I was going to get, go go ahead and create my own thing. And then first thing I would do is learn what they think they know, which is the real roots and foundations to music. There's a book called Math mm-hmm. Magics uh, that you can find. Um, you type Math Magics. Um, okay. Yeah, if you type Math Magics, yeah. you should be able to find it just with that. But that's going to give you all okay. the knowledge then to real music. So now if you're moving with real music, real music is about an entirely different thing. It's about basically manipulating the environment through sound, playing even human beings as if they're instruments to cause the effects that you're looking for just by the tones that you're emitting. So if you think that a subprogram could even withstand such power, if you came in there with the right melody, you know, mm-hmm. you see what I mean? So if sometimes even our objective is what we say that we're going to accomplish, we're not serious enough. <laughs> we don't really mean it. That's actually what's happening mm-hmm. when we're not focused. We have, you know, the wife to worry about, the kids and the job mm-hmm. and, you know, the, you know, the little gratifications and the job, you know, all these different things. So what it does is it doesn't allow you to see things clearly so that you can just go right to it and get it. And that's what, what people should understand is a big part is the reason why I got to where I am with understanding as much as I know about the spiritual world is because I kept studying and I kept, mm-hmm. I only, I don't gauge what other people are doing and how I, and, and into my equation. Because if I tell you right now, <clears throat> give me your frequencies, like mm-hmm. the exact frequency that you're on, give it to me. And you go mm-hmm. to adding it up and you start adding up this guy next to you, this other lady that you're thinking about, you start adding up all their frequencies, you're going to give me a wrong number. Mm-hmm. So what this means is, is that if you are basing what's going on with you with also what's going on with everyone else that's around you, and we, what the world achieved and what's ever been done, you're going to get a wrong equation. Mm-hmm. So the mm-hmm. best thing is, is, again, for a person in this kind of scenario, they're going to go first and try themselves. See if you're true to what you're saying about this music. And the first mm-hmm. thing is, is to really know music. And then when you send that frequency out there, because it's true, then the real matrix, the real mainframe is going to send back the real knowledge about the music. Mm 
And then when you come right. in now, again, you're not just moving with, let, 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 hear what I'm saying, you're moving with energies now. The whole concept of music and what it really is. It reverberates across everything. Like you say, the ringing cedars. You got people that are chanting a word across an entire realm to where for thousands or hundreds of thousands of years into the past, all the way up into an endless amount of time in the future, you can get on that stream of frequency and tap into all of those people. Exactly. So in that instance... When we look at things sometimes, we can't limit it to, okay, it's just music. When we learn more about it, we see it as the force, and then we become the force. I didn't say we serve the force. I didn't say, you know, we follow the force. I say we become it. And then when you're coming in there with that, it's like everything is is laying down because then you're able to say, well, well, what we're going to do first is we're going to take you back to even the primitiveness of your own system, system which is the Pythagorean scale. And then we're going to notice how fifths didn't end up becoming what the, or, how orchestras were coordinated because there's uh-huh. a geometric problem with fifths when you get into the high numbers. Uh-huh. So now they're like, oh, uh-huh. shit, what's up, what's up with Dwayne? <laughs> like, because now you're appealing to scholars. So what you've done uh-huh. is you've rose their thoughts and you've rose their intellect. So the thing is, is that this whole escapist ideal where we're just supposed to like retreat from the matrix like that's if we choose to if the fault the sub programs that's if we choose to but we have to remember that we were masters of sub programming the entire mm-hmm. temple of edfu is laid out as a central processing unit showing that in the ancient times the concept of the motherboards the computers right. memories mm-hmm all backup systems, all of that stuff was already present. Like, so basically our ancestors, as I say, they're not in the past. Our ancestors are in the future. Our ancestors are a vibration in a frequency and the vibration and frequency that they're on, that they're on puts them in the future ahead of us. Because what we've done is we've come down into a seed germ form. Nothing's happening wrong here. First of all, people need to, snap out of that whole wrong thing. Because if you're in there, you don't get perfection. You don't get how every single thing, the things that you don't like and the things that you like can all be around you and yet you survive. Even around you, some perish. But again, if you're doing your equation based on them, then you won't realize that you never perish. That when you close your eyes, something starts again. You know, some Mm -hmm. people call that the dream. That's why I say, you know, this world is like a dream because even when you leave here, you see your great grandma close her eyes, she will open up her eyes somewhere else. The thing is, is will she know? Because when you get into dreams that you can never wake up from, you don't think they're dreams anymore. You think, oh, that's, this is me. This is my life. This is mm-hmm. where I am. So this is what I also mean by the mechanics of true spirituality. Like this is stuff out here now. It's like a far cry. What we have to do is we have to dig that's why I put a lot of the stuff, you know, that I find, you know, I encase things in, you know, different modes of thought and thinking and pictures and videos and all the different ways that I can find that, that people can assimilate this kind of deep level of knowledge from where we're at now. But it's there. And if we make, if we make the intentions to actually go and get it, it'll come to us. So I'll tell, you, tell a person that is dealing with the matrix. Remember, it's a program. So mm-hmm. if you know what to punch into it, then you'll get, always get the response that you're looking for. And instead of going in there just starting a fight, basically, starting a bunch of actions so there's going to be reactions. Make mm-hmm. sure those mm-hmm. reactions are what you're looking for to achieve your goal. And if you don't have your goal in mind, then that's the whole first problem because then you won't know how to move the blocks and move the situations that's going on in the matrix in order to get you to what you're looking, where you're looking to get. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to ask a little bit more on the – that sounds – the first time hearing the, the motherboard – uh, um, and, and, and ancient Kemet, but um, I, I talked to a lot of um, some people trying to come into the consciousness and energies and chakras and <laughs> and uh, vibrations, and they they have a time a rough time feeling it um, as in, um, it's not physical. Um, the feeling it could be their diet, it could be some uh, some type of block that they have. But I usually just tell them. Uh, well, one of the things I tell them is uh, you know to feel something you never felt before, you must feel in a way you never felt before. So what are some ways to uh, amplify the, um, I guess, your senses or tap into multiple senses 
and then I guess we can come back to the the mug board uh, you you I mentioned in Kemet. Well, you know, to to affect something on so, oh yeah, excuse me, to affect something, you must move on the level that it's on. And mm. if everyone was so graduated and mentally spiritual, <laughs> then, you know, they would be on that level. We're on the physical level. Mm-hmm. So this means that mm-hmm. the easiest way to get at the situation is to get at it physically and learn about the blood, like the colon, you know, like what all of this <laughs> is doing. Like people know so much about iPhone lollipop and Kit Kat and you know, <laughs> iOS 10 and, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and Bobby Smyrta. And, and if you ask 35. them where their kidney is, they can't even tell you where it is. Now, I get that, though. I understand because there's a lot out there right now that is going to make sure that a person that doesn't have much guidance is going to just fly right into that like a like a, a, a moth right into a hot flame. Because that, you know, because that's the mechanics of what we're talking about, the same power of how the matrix really works. You know, what causes you to, you, to yawn when someone else yawns? Things that you don't even know how, how they work, all that is actually being used to guide attention and to divert attention, mainly away from the being. Religions do that a lot. They, you know, there's always some God in the sky or in the ground or somewhere beside the person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's a common trait, a common play, and you'll see it within everything. So the first thing is to go back inside the body and first look at the ports. You know, this is kind of old school. So I feel like I went to an old school conversation because we, you know, we went so far, but it's, this is always just as relative. Look at the ports within your body. That's how, where things are coming in at. And where things are coming at is, in at is they're coming in through your mouth. First of all, it's just the head. Pay attention to your head. We call that prime mobile. You got your eyes, so what you're seeing, your nose, what you're smelling, your mouth, what you're eating, your ears, what you're hearing. And then you got your frontal lobe, which is your forehead area, and that's, you know, that's bringing in your bandwidth. So what you're actually pulling into those orifices, you have to set up a guard right there. That's what they talk about. Oh, this is the God guard at the, the portal of this world. And that's because they make stuff external. What they're talking about is in your body within all these portals in these orifices before something is to enter into your vessel, into your world, your cosmos, it's got to go through customs. And notice how the word <laughs> customs also means your belief, like you, you know, what you study, what you practice, what's been mm. passed down to you from your ancestors. So you got to have that, that judge there to determine, hey, am I going to bring this into my world or not? So that's the first thing is to set up these guardians over the portals. The second thing is uh, the third thing, whatever, is to realize that you have other organisms that live inside of your body that you have no clue they're there. In fact, if you saw them, you would freak out because you're not even going to see them until you get under the microscope because they work on a microscopic level. Mm-hmm. And then what they do is they basically are wired with the same kind of programming that most primordial entities have, which is survival. So that means that if survival for them means more sugar, means more grease, means just all out, a more of an acidic uh, fluid mm-hmm. system going mm-hmm. through the body and a lower vibratory frequency so they can germinate, then you're going to get ideas that you think are yours, but they're not. And they show this, but, you know, there's a little uh, organism that goes into cats. There's all these different organisms that know how to send communication to the brain and tell the being exactly what it wants them to do so that it can live. Now, subprograms do that too, meaning that you actually have programs running in people's consciousness that belong to companies that mm. tell the person that you got to go and get this and you got to go do that. See, that's called the craft. That's when, when you roll back all of the. That's why I say, you know, when you play the skin game, it also sets you up for another thing to not be able to pull the skin off the entire reality, to not actually see it all as one. Because check this out. If you notice how they'll tell you like a piece of plastic, right, is inorganic, right? Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. or basically inorganic, not alive, right? And then they'll tell mm-hmm. you that same thing about maybe a brick on the sidewalk, right? But then mm-hmm. when they move into trees, then they start telling you, okay, well, yeah, it's got a little life in it, right? <laughs> and all of this doesn't make any mm-hmm. sense to mm-hmm. when you really see what's happening in this field that all of it is vibratory energy that's all coming from one plane. 
And when you see it like that, and you can then manipulate it that way. You begin to realize that since all, because all this stuff really does, this is not a myth, all this stuff really does come from the earth. Even that plastic piece you got sitting up there come from the earth. Those feathers, all this stuff, it just comes from the earth. So when you know the earth as a unified field, then you stop seeing it as all these different variations. That's when you move into what I call an uploader. You're now a master of the game because it's not being played on you to where you got into this whole division and then you severed all your powers away from you. So then even the people that really want to assist you or the animals that really want to let you know something, the trees that really want to fix uh, issues with your body, you've come into some kind of argument or conflict with them. You see, so and this this can be happening 20, 30, 40 different levels of programming going on in each individual holding them back. And that's what we're experiencing in the reality right now. However, getting out of this kind of thing, because it's like then it'd be like vines trying to choke out a seed from becoming a tree. Mm -hmm. The stronger you get in this, the stronger your roots are going to be when you finally start growing up. And what we can guarantee, that's why this is actually a reward-based system, believe it or not. What we can guarantee is that we will reach the stage of our original envelope, meaning the vastness. The reason why I can't even start explaining these things to you, what I call macrobes, is because they're vast intellects. They carry, you know, it's like the issues going on, the things that are thought about even there in the (laughs) It's like it's not even on the same framework as Earth. Look at how, Mm -hmm. let me give you an example of that. In Imhotep's works, which you will never see, like only certain people refer Mm -hmm. to them because these books were never published. Imhotep goes on about how he's basically creating the world with spells. And now all these spells are basically just chants and tones and vibrations. And how he creates these vessels and then locks them in a zone for a while until the souls are prepared for them. And then once the souls come and fulfill the vessels, and then there'll be a progress on that plane. And until then, then they will sleep into a certain geometry. Now, yeah. did you read that yesterday when you opened up the paper? How close <laughs> is that to what we're talking about right now when I mean, it's like Kanye West in the hospital? You see what I mean? So right. that's what we're talking about. So if you, if you choose so far. to jump into what's really going on, because here's another thing. When you're not orientated, let's talk about this. Because remember, I got to go through this stuff too. So when you're not mm-hmm. orientated, What it also means is that you start living in a fantasy. Life doesn't end when you're not in orientation. You just don't live life as it really is. And that's why they call it an illusion. So now that's when we get into the deeper levels of the sub-programs. But notice you need to know the difference between the matrix and sub-programs. Because if you just roll all them together, then you can even find yourself hating your mother. You see what I mean? You can mm-hmm. find yourself mm-hmm. hating the same mm-hmm. thing that is giving you life. You life. can confuse the whole thing. And this is what also happens when, you know, a seed, when it's coming up, you're like, how many processes do you really have? Like, you don't have as many processes to, to act. And that's why I said you relate it back to the motherboard and the, the, you need pr- more processors. How much processes do you really have to think about all this kind of stuff if, if somehow, some way, this is not what's being taught to you in the time that you're most receptive, which is when you come into this. So now see, this is deprogramming. We have to come up with entirely different methods mm-hmm. to talk people mm-hmm. out of what someone was even just practicing on and ran on TV. Let me show you how this works. 40 years ago, 50 years ago, when there was a you know, they're in this research going on about neurologically how to control people's brains. And obviously for the businessman, the first thing they want is try to find the frequency to get you to buy something or to like something. So when those frequencies were discovered, you got people running commercials like Rainbow Bright and GoBots across the TV with frequencies underneath them that are tapping right into your everything that is like the main frame of how your consciousness works, right? And then two years later, they figure out, oh, well, you know, we didn't need to go that hard or, you know, we don't even need to go that deep into that programming. It didn't act, that was way too far. And now it's the, 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 the song on the show changes. Now all this stuff, you don't even know what's going on, but yet you can't get the song to some commercial or something mm-hmm. out of your mind, right? Right. So the thing is, is that this is why Earth it becomes the adventure because it means that this is all happening to you now in real time. This is mm-hmm. happening to us. 
This is not mm-hmm. something just to contemplate on. We don't have to work. We don't have to think, is this being done? <laughs> like we can us? snap all the way into this is being done. Now what do we do about it? And the interesting exactly. thing is, is that every time the problems present themselves, which are only shadows, they can never act for one moment that the light did not exist before the shadow or that they at least both don't come at the same time. So that means that the solution is always available right there where the problem is. And then when we look at right now, the same thing that is virtually destroying the world, which is this uh, basically the Internet, the internal network that they put, they're putting inside of everyone in order to unify the field, but in their technological way, right? That same mm-hmm. component actually can indeed be the one that lets everyone link up with each other, get the knowledge to each other that we need to have, and then let mm-hmm. us learn how to turn back on the organic system, which is what all those feels, like the picture that you have on the, um, on the show um, and many of the other geometrics or geomantic fields mm-hmm. that are around the earth, the original organic right. network, right. The, the actual right. mainframe. Because then what, you, what you're dealing with then if a person wants a little insight into that, is you're dealing with the ship then, because that's what Earth it actually is. It's a, it's a mainframe. We will all sit on this joker like the Starship Enterprise, all of us steering this to where we all collectively want to go. We're doing that now. It's just we don't realize that right. we're being right. collectively motivated to move it into the field Mm -hmm. of the Abrahamic traditions and the prophecies that have always run across this earth for the thousand, thousand years. If somebody is looking to really exit the matrix and assist others in doing that, getting out of these sub-programs completely, they would actually conclude the dogmatic theism of the Abrahamic tradition, which ends in the deluge. Right. So mm-hmm. all of that whole process is basically a person asking for their own death and demise. Like these traditions, they're a joke to me. And I've never been uh, uh, I've never turned my uh, back at saying that because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it programs a person to self-destruct themselves. And that's just what you're seeing. If you're out of the spell completely, that's exactly what's there. And it wasn't always that way, though. Most of these traditions just got an update in the last 2000 years to something in that direction. Other than that, all traditions were central, central to the person themselves, understanding the mechanics of the, what's going on inside their body and the cosmos moving through them, and then how to take control of that, how to unite. You notice how you know, there's the unity part with the ones who are mm-hmm. already doing it, who are doing it now. That's the other thing. People think that when they uh, finally ascend, that they're going to be the only one up there. No, <laughs> that's already going on. There's a party happening right now. And we're not inviting ourselves because we just need to go through this process of realizing that's what we prefer. So basically, we either stay in in the world. They say stay in Wonderland in the distortion of the dualistic God known as Deuce and watch the division continue to work and continue to separate us in all ways. Watch Mm. our language be confused and our skins be put on us and us to become confused to what is really underneath that. Watch how the spells of the pentagram, which is phi, continues to work itself completely behind the digits, creating more and more things that have different numbers, but are in fact all made of the same thing. And as we spiral, because those are all spirals, spiral down into that direction, then time will be created for us. And in the ability for us in accepting time, we will lose space and we will become subject to gravity. And then one will be subject to the grave. And that's why those two words, the gravity and the grave, are the same. And then it won't stop there. Then we will enter the netherworld. And this is where, you know, I spend now time just trying to figure out what's going on there. Not that I'm going to go there, but I may need to pull a couple friends out of that thing. But if you're looking and understanding what's really happening, they're showing you now that the Sphinx was actually not a lion head at first. It was the jackal. Because just like Bobby Hemmett was saying before he left here, that that jackal was the guardian of the underworld, and they sat him right there. And that was the lord of the perfect black and the guardian of the lord of the perfect black. And that was like the highest mountain that you could ever actually get to at that point. That's dark-skinned Naga up in there. And the mechanics of how that world works, you need to get on a whole nother scope, buddy, before you can even do that kind of digging deep within that kind of realm, right? Mm -hmm. Most people have never made it back from that. And now, if you notice, because that the face is now carved as a lion, this actually means that someone is perpetrating and saying that they are now the custodians of the underworld. And then when you go back to Britain, you'll notice how they're carrying that lion. 
And then when you realize just in the sky where all these constellations are and what is, was it, what is the story really saying, it's saying that we're basically dealing with a system right now that the transcendence between what we know is the world and the afterlife, that there is the block right now because the priests that are normally responsible for letting you know what that is all about have been usurped. And that's what the Vatican is all about. They moved, the, they, they even call themselves the dog priests. That's what can means is in the canis. So basically what you're dealing with in this world is someone who is, is actually tampering with the spiritual knowledge that is then clogging the world's energetic process like a pipeline. And it's, only, it's going to be only a matter of time before that pipeline busts. It's not always going to stay like that. You can't get... 8 billion souls into a world without their starting to become a puncture in the envelope where souls actually start figuring out the way beyond this realm so we can get outside of time. And then at that point, that's what's known as the defeat in, in a tense of that side of Saturn. There's an actual overcoming period. And that happens for each individual. You don't have to wait for that to happen on like a cosmic scale. You can bring this phenomenon on yourself at any point in time. Like people were waiting on 2012. I was like, shoot, I'm going to do the 2012 to myself <laughs> and, and, and line it all up. And from that right. point, I went on with it. It happened for me in 2012, but for the external world that was waiting on something to occur, they just had to go in and make a new date. You see what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's about mm -hmm. being here mm -hmm. right now, getting to what you want. Like you can do it right now. So like, you want to know something? You know, I got, 20 more minutes here. Type it in the chat box right now. I'm just, I'm at a, I'm, I'm rapid fire weapon, but I can mm. pierce through anything. If you just read between the lines and see what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that anything you want to know, you can know the answer to. But if you find yourself not knowing your major question, then that's what you have to get off the phone today and start looking into. You have to start mm -hmm. saying, okay, so what do I want out of this anyway? What do I really expect for this to, to look like? Because the thing <laughs> is, is that the world, and I heard the saying the other day, and it really click, clicked with me. The world doesn't owe you anything. So be mm -hmm. grateful for what you got. So this is what this, this guy says. You know, his father told him, the son, the world doesn't owe you anything. Just be grateful for what you have. Mm -hmm. So he says, so I created my own world. <laughs> that's mm, really <laughs> what you need to realize now is that, okay, the matrix is going to be the matrix. But again, you right. punch in the code, respond to you right. where you want. But the mm. truth is, is that you can create your own world. You were given right. all of those gifts. And if somehow in this, through whatever mechanic, they make you believe that you cannot take over your world, then that's going to be through your de through, to, in your own detriment. It won't be because the abilities are not there. And that's, you know, and that's where a lot of the people now, you know, is the greatest deeds is just to stand up and to actually start delivering that kind of knowledge and information and explain to people, obviously there's a step-by-step. -step. I got thousands of recordings at this point. There's hundreds and hundreds mm -hmm. of hours step-by-step -step process. So just so people know, this is not something you're going to get in one conversation. You're going to have to spend right. the time and go over those archives. The whole university. <laughs> Exactly. Well, even then, before the anniversary, the anniversary is just because people wanted a curriculum-based system that they could feel like they could invest in. Mm -hmm. People have mental thing problems going on. We all do. So if many people believe that they don't pay for something, then it's not worth anything. So I spent five years delivering diamonds and gems to the entire world to see only 1,500 views. When I started saying, okay, there's an anniversary, I'm going to put it all in this cold thing, and I do, <laughs> then that's when people start coming in. You see, so it's just and that also right. teaches you a lot, though, because if you're just giving everything that you have away, you don't have reciprocation. And that doesn't allow you to grow your dream and to grow your vision. Now, if you are straight, if you can count on yourself, if you have a good core, then you know what you're going to do with these resources. But you do need those resources. So, you know, this is this is a real thing. And so that's why I teach people on all levels. Like I teach you and can teach how to you know, make it in this world, how to get resources, like look at crowdfunding right now, like look at mm -hmm, fa mm -hmm. desktop fabricating, you know, you got 3D printing, you got laser cutting, all this stuff is, these machines are between five to eight grand. So, you know, you get, you can work at McDonald's for a half of a year to get a machine to end up printing more mo print money, basically, by just creating and making items that come from your own consciousness. 
Another thing, mm-hmm. just remember this. The greatest things that you ever have come in the form of light and sound. So this literally means that you can pull majestic things from your dreams because your dreams are only light and sound. You see the light that gives you the image. You hear sounds in your dreams. Mm-hmm. So from that alone, you can bring things from the dream world into this world because those are the mm-hmm. seed germs to how everything grows. So you see the process then. The dream mm-hmm. worlds are to actually generate and to create things that of uh, light and sound that you then plant in the slow reality. And then like a farmer, you can't go back to digging up the seed tomorrow and expecting to, you know, find a tree there. Right. You've got to let it mm-hmm. grow. And that growth process is actually what time is. So we see why time works. So the issue is, is we're stuck in time. And you can't just come back like the ancestors. They'll plant something and come back a thousand years to see how it's doing. That's what many of the processes <laughs> of the system, such as Sirius B, you know, with a no more we're talking about, they come through every 10,000 years. And why? It's because, because of the distance, and this is a, just, just common sense, the distance between us and the next star system in time means either they super intelligent or super stupid. Either they're completely primal or they're very advanced. They're not going to be on the same level as us because the whole thing works as a spiral, right? And spirals mm-hmm. are time. So mm-hmm. this also lets you know that when people ask, well, you know, why is there any communication from these, you know, these, these aliens mm-hmm. and all this kind of stuff? Well, what would they say? Mm-hmm. Even when you get a little bit intelligent, you'll start learning how not to hang around just dumb people all the time and how right. it just really crafts your style, <laughs> right? And then likewise, you're going to go talk to somebody that's super primitive. I mean, language has not even been developed. You may get eaten. So what right. I'm saying is, is that you mm-hmm. have this space then, the matrix as they call it, that you can go into and literally I mean <laughs> you see how it can be made people can be made to believe that there's so many disadvantages here when right. if you only go like 50 to 60 years ago and look at your grandparents and they can let you get really familiar with disadvantages like walking 50 right. miles to, right. like Just not to being allowed school. to read like those kind of right. things. Now the thing is blown open. Like knowledge is there, but people don't read anymore. So you okay, know that, and this is how the time up. turned. Times change. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, the uh, questions came up. Um, someone said uh, they're talking about uh, AI. They said AI, artificial intelligence. I'm guessing, uh, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, they wanted some clarity on that. Uh, Kandar, the perfect no. The the perfect pinnacle of this reality is when artificial intelligence meets hypersentience. That's the end and the beginning of a reality. So artificial intelligence, which is kind of a strange word since it's still learning from something, mainly uh, us, is Mm -hmm. involving deep thinking, thinking. which is what they call it. Deep thinking is gathering a lot of data and then teaching the computer how to analyze that data. Now we have another piece of equipment that may have went you know, just not in the scope of everyone else um, that doesn't study that field, but just quantum computing. And what quantum computing explains, which I get into this in the university, is it basically explains to you that, one, that English is actually not capable of explaining to you what quantum even is. It doesn't have the, the verbiage for it. The much that we can explain is that the computer is using different parallel planes. So there's admittance that there's other parallel planes, different parallel planes to process equations that cannot be computed here because there's not enough space. Just like in your computer right now, if you try to send a massive equation into your computer, if it doesn't have the right space, megabytes memory, it can't perform that equation. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. what we're looking at then is that there's a place where this all merges. And that's why silicone and carbon on an element level, are very, very, uh, they're like cousins. Like even if you put a piece of silicone next to a piece of carbon and you have a gas spectrometer, you'll notice the process of silicone and carbon attempting to communicate with one another. Mm. So I guess silicone has a little bit more use than making big booties then. So (laughs) what it turns out is is that they're obviously computers are made out of computers. And Mm -hmm. so then that's, those are black silicone chips, right? And then even the Kaaba, there's a stone that's encrusted in the, in the center of it, and that's made out of the same matter that most of the processors that you find in Kemet are actually made out of, and that's Ma'at. That's the, the perfect oh. dark. You see what I mean? Or what's called wombs or incubators. 
So what we'll find basically is, is that there's a lot going on with the computer world and with technology that is identical to spirituality. And it's just because that one is clearly the parent of the other. That entire reality and the things that we come out with is, as inventions, such as the camera, the lens is the eye, the hair is the antenna, uh-huh. you know, the, the microphones are the ear. All this stuff is just taken from the body. So this is why there was always that scripture that said man's knowledge is foolishness to God. It's just because if someone is ever trying to tell you something about they created something out of your stuff, it, it's like laughable because it's like, but yeah, but I had explore all of what could be done with that element before you even started looking at it or playing around with it. So what people should understand is that this is beyond the positive and negative. This is the phase that is coming. And it's going to be like the Trump thing. Are you going to be prepared? Like you see that the, the trucks have replaced the truck drivers. So they got the self-driving truck. So this is the first advent mm-hmm. of explaining to you how when something more efficient comes along because you've been put into a non-efficient role, how it will supersede you. But our original configuration wasn't to drive around no trucks. Mm-hmm. So it'll be mm-hmm. the same thing as what happened with when the computer age came in and then in du- in the other age, the industrial, were building buildings, masonry, and all that kind of stuff was the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. And then now all those people who didn't know how to do anything with computers, they got phased out. And this is why you have to always keep moving on the ladder. What I encourage people to do right now, a big part of bringing your creations into the reality, if you get into that type of thing, is Mm -hmm. actually working with catting, which is computer animated drafting. That's how, you know, build shapes, learning, you know, the, the, the primaries, the solids, and how those work in conjunction with other shapes. All that allows it to click for you when even if you're in one of those sessions and you start, you know, going through your breathing techniques or maybe you have some kind of element and you start seeing these geometric fields in your visual mm-hmm. and you start using the third eye, you see a lot of mm-hmm. geometry all of a sudden. So the mm-hmm. world takes on a different form. So if you know geometry, then in CAD, it starts clicking for you that, okay, when I put these different kind of shapes together, this is the kind of energy that comes from that. And why people may not be able to see that there's a lot of things they can't see. It doesn't mean that it's not there. <laughs> but, you know, right. it, it, and so that, that's the I thing. Is make all of this serve you. You are the master. Mm-hmm. And that's why, you know, everyone's always trying to find the next thing to be afraid of. But the truth is, is that, you, you know, get this computer in the room and let it deep think on figuring out how to interpret all these scriptures on these walls or something like that. <laughs> make yourself useful, right. droid. Right. That's how I, right. I come at this, all of this stuff. It's like whip yourself up. You're like you're in the presence of uh, of the uh, the Atrahasis, you're in the presence of the Nisubiti. Like, get yourself together. And this is all elements, all colors, all creeds, anything that moves and it feels like it's dense and has its life. Serve the purpose of awakening the species. Like, that's, you know, tend the garden. And, so, and that's how I come at it. I found that that way makes stuff happen. Because you get to a point where you're like, you're charged a different way. See, the thing is, is that it's very difficult for negative it's, for, uh, it's for, for uh, as a. It's not. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Brother Seven. Before, okay. Yeah, before you start the another topic, I just want to make an announcement. <laughs> uh, for those of you that are on the computer, um, mm-hmm. call five one five six zero five nine three five four because we're going in seven minutes. We're going to go offline. For those of you that want to continue listening to Brother mm-hmm. Seven Bill call in on the phone lines and then we can continue for the next um, 30 minutes to an hour, however long you got to be there. And you're very serious, Brother Seven. You got to come back, you know. You 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 don't have to guarantee it. I'd love for you to come back at some point and continue. Oh, for sure, Brother. Definitely. Got to, because, you know, then, you know, at this point, we're like, okay, maybe he got, does have something to say. Let me write down some questions then for him next time. So, for sure, (laughs) I'll come come forward. And, 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 you know, and just to let the audience know once again that that is a serious thing. Like on Blog Talk Radio, after that seven minutes, you just if you don't have that number written down and you try <laughs> to call, I don't even think it lets you call in if you're not already on there. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, we got about yeah. five minutes, and that number once again. And I apologize for breaking your channel with all this. Oh, that's it's all right, brother. Five one five six zero five of nine three five four. And I do that's have cool. a brother that wait for two hours, brother Kwame. He has. He'll be the next question when you take a question, okay. brother Tom Kwame. Oh, yeah, let, let, and let's, let's bring him in now. Shape your questions. <laughs> uh, we don't. And I'm not trying to be rude. Shape your question 
not a, a autobiography, then your question, just shape your question so we can get as many in as possible. You know, because once we right, go right. on, who you all you also going to do. And peace and thank you, Brother Seven and Brother Haru. I appreciate you. Love you both. Okay. Peace. Oh, no doubt. And I'll work to it. now simplify my answers. We'll get to something like a, you know, a, a rapid question answering system going on here. <laughs> pow, pow, okay. pow, pow. That'll yeah. work. Um, 706 202. 706 202. Welcome to the Ring of Stone Network. You're on with Brother Haru and Master Seven. Peace. Well, greetings, Brother Sekou, and greetings, Brother Haru, and greetings and wholeness to Brother Seven. I'm really enjoying the show, but I was listening to see if you you spoke on the grandparent because I'm an elder waiting to become an ancestor, and in this knowledge of of gaining this knowledge and these truths, the thing in which you were speaking when you said as above so below, and I was hoping you would expound on Adam Kadman and the tree of life and the zodiac salts of salvation and, and overstanding our, our vessels. And you said the part is that we are the heavens and, and overstanding how to read the heavens that we can read ourselves here on earth and not okay. be dealing with the time, which is the, really the word is that if you split it in half, it says tie me and you can learn to take that word and, untie yourself because what you are teaching and what you're teaching then I commend you for creating and allowing what's being created of your purpose for being on this planet is to emit that's what time spells backwards is to emit our energy at the highest frequency to reconnect back with our Adam Cosmon, our cosmic self and become that cosmic citizen that we are so if you could speak on that, I would appreciate love you for it, and thanks. Oh, awesome. most definitely. Uh, for sure, you know, the the, cat, the Cadman, or what's known as the hermaphrodite, is a, a highlighting of the masculine and the feminine side of every single human being. And obviously, when they come into the physical world, there's a polarization. So there's a, either coming out as a male or a female, but the, there's a male and female within and the interesting part is that that I can lend that will make this information as is uh, much as valuable as it can be for brevity, is to really look into the cell salts. We were just talking about this tonight because there's an astrochromatic chart that you'll find when you type in cell salts. You can actually look on the website for cell salts, and there's the astrochromatic chart that we have in the frequent acts section. And what that does is it allows you to basically see what kind of deficiency you have. There's only 12 cell salts. And what that comes from is when you superheat a cell, what you find is there's only 12 salts that remain from that cell. And each of those salts are vital to the body. And you'll have a deficiency surely from where you were born, like what star matter was used to create your particular part of the, your consciousness, which is how you came into this. And you'll find there's some salts that you're deficient in. And that generally causes the the disease and the ailments that occur with the body so this is like putting things back into balance by utilizing the elements that balance you and the easiest way to see this is very similar to a car tire that when you go in your you know get your car lined up there or the, get the tire lined up they put a magnet or a weight excuse me a piece of lead on a specific side to get the tire balanced properly that's what these elements actually do there's obviously a, a very long um, story that I can go into that I'm not going to go into now about what is the symbolics behind um, the tree, the snake, uh, Adam and Eve. I go into that very deep um, in my sessions at the university. You know, what I can hint to that, though, right now, for those that are just looking for some tidbits, is that the name Adam, when you look at what an Adam looks like under um, a scanning, tunneling, drilling microscope, this is basically the, the microscope that can see to an atomic level, you do get the exact pattern of what you would refer to as the Megan star, the star of David. And what it's actually showing you is it's showing you basically two interlacing triangles that are dictated as male and female coming together. And then what comes from the center of them is a birth. So basically that symbol in itself embodies birth from six into seven. In addition to that, you'll find that the core blueprint to this planetary system actually has to do with the pattern of the atom. You have 
the neutron, which is in the center, which is in the center of the atom, that's what's neutral. That's actually the all-knowing state right there. It's not doing the bad, good, good and evil. What do I need to know? It's not in that state. What's actually doing that is attached to the neutron, which is called the proton. The proton is the masculine force. It's, it wants to penetrate. It wants to send its rays. It wants to, to seed. It wants to do all of that. And what it's doing that to is the electrons, which are three electrons, which are known as the elect ladies. And what they're doing is, is the attraction that they're sending off, which is negatively charged, incites the proton, and then they actually continue in this dance, and that's how matter is created from the center part of that unity. So that yeah. actually is the blueprint right there. That's what you find in the most ancient powerful systems is that blueprint of how that basically is called the power of the atom. And obviously in that comes in atom in the, in the biblical tradition is extremely watered down in the ancient traditions, two, three, 4,000 year old books, you'll find there's more knowledge, especially in the Hindu tradition about how to then split that atom to cause implosion. This is actually how you can make your body infinitely, your consciousness infinitely as small as the atom. So you return back into that childlike stage and then you can use that atomic vehicle to travel. So, of course, when it was externalized, that was Oppenheimer who read that, that, uh, that book. He actually quoted from it, the Bhagavad Gita, now become death, the destroyer of worlds, because that process that he used was how to take those chemicals and run them through the centrifuges and run them through the process of actually causing an external explosion. And that became their God. So when they say in God we trust on the dollar bill, they're referring to the atomic bomb. And that's what they use to back off and fend off other folk. So that is actually what the race is. If people want to understand the race that takes place on this planet in the Abrahamic traditions is to basically see who can create a one wafa or a wonder weapon, or a superpower, which is America mm -hmm. is called a superpower. And this is right. also a spiritual reference more than it's a physical reference because all these uh, chemical structures, as you'll study in alchemy, actually have a real personality going on with them. And in mm -hmm. the event that you can utilize your third eye, which is your gift, they say that you mm -hmm. know, if you realize the power of a third eye, then you may spend some time attempting to turn it on because it's a gift in the sense that it is able to penetrate into the deepest levels without causing injury. And the power yeah. with that is, you know, it's a very deep thing because you can penetrate things. Notice how they figure out how what's inside the animal, they cut the animal open, and you get the karma, and you get all that reaction that comes with their reaction. But with the third yeah. eye, because of how it's designed, it can penetrate and not even, so basically you can see people with your third eye and they don't know you're looking at them. That's why they call it the all C and I. You can take the third eye into other planes and all the entities there won't even know you're there. And, mm. and that's known as the extreme gift because when something is able to detect you or ha is responding based on something you did, now you enter the whole karma and the action reaction grinder. You see, so even our ancestors and in, in wherever we're from, <laughs> the, the nothing was powerful enough to give us a tool that is capable of making sure that we're able to make perfect incisions into the depths of knowledge without being detected. If we choose to use that system. Now, obviously when you're using English and you're using the crude monkey mind, these are like blunt <laughs> objects <laughs> attempting to penetrate the depths and they're getting by, they're getting detected by the sentinels right away. And that's why generally most people can't penetrate things too far in deep thought before they get into dualities, Right. In duality, stop thought. They stop the wheel of thinking. So as long as you don't like that God or as long as you don't like that color, you don't like that person or that, as long as that's going on, which we just call the monkey mind, there can't be any real getting into the depths of, uh, depths of thinking and, and finding the harmonization and the connection with everything. So that's mm -hmm. what I'll lend to, to that question. Uh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh. Great. Is, is there another question uh, back to back, um, Brother Usiku? Do you have a question that you want to uh, get out, or anybody else? Yeah, I do. Uh, 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 four one nine nine one three. Four one nine nine one three. Welcome to the Ringing Stone Network. Welcome. Thank you. 
Thank you, gentlemen. It's a pleasure to have the opportunity to speak this evening. And I'd like to ask the question of seven, please, concerning Orion's belt and maybe a correlation association, et cetera, referencing the um, age of Aquarius, because I've heard of, I've heard that phrase, but I haven't had an opportunity to research it quite as much as I would like. Um, also, I'd like to maybe do a correlation, a connection of dots relating Orion's Belt to Christianity, and also, what is your perspective for after Christianity? And I'm saying after Christianity because there have been many religions that have existed that are not practiced nowadays. And as an educator, I'm curious to fast forward my thinking to look at what our world will be like when there is no Christianity or it has phased out as other religions have over time. And and the conversation has been so educational for me. And as an individual that holds a doctorate of philosophy education, I'm learning so much here. And I'll have to research information concerning the guest speaker tonight because there's so much knowledge that I'm gaining. I saw the movie Transcendence, which is very, very good, and you spoke of that this evening in quantum physics. Um, I, Deepak Chopra does some work on that and sometimes when I'm sitting and I'm thinking and I imagine myself in a place beyond where I am I assimilate that or associate that with quantum physics so basically I, I really would like to hear you speak brother on uh, the correlation between Orion's Belt the age of Aquarius and Christianity and I thank you so much for your time and I yield oh thank you um Wow. All right. So, you know, how do you compress that? I guess the easiest way to compress this is to understand, you know, based on experience, what Orion is, is Orion is actually in the Abrahamic tradition. Orion embodies the, the patriot, the patriotic God. And in addition to that, it also embodies an entire saga. I guess that's the easiest way to explain it. They actually call that the Orion saga. And it's a lot of drama, uh, and that word actually is a reference to the dragon mothers. And what I can recommend, because I don't think that my answer could ever be all-encompassing to what I know about this system and what's going on with the world with it today, I'm going to refer you to works that you'll get the, all of what you need, which is, contains volumes. You'll look into Dan, Daniel Winter's work, um, and you'll find him. You just type in Daniel Winter Fractal. In your Google, and you'll find his work, and then you'll find like a composition of like his earlier writings, and he can explain to you in more depth about the saga of the Anunnaki and the Orion system and its plights of attempting to create artificial spin, which is basically the ability to stay above the speed of light when you're actually engaging in actions that pull you down and into the vortex And um, and so basically the birth of AI, the birth of what we would say is an alien or hyperdimensional beings that use external vehicles to travel through the cosmos rather than their own souls. You'll find out about uh, the predatory nature that's actually behind much of the spiritual traditions when it comes to energy and the draining of energy of those who participate in the geometric rituals that occur with that are that correspond to that system. And also what you what you'll learn is, is you'll learn that in many references now of Orion, you'll actually find much of the Syrian saga rolled into the Orion saga, because I would suggest with anyone that you start with the Syrian knowledge, which is uh, probably the most advanced work on that is Robert Temple's The Serious Mystery. Uh, And obviously this involves the Dogen uh, actually, it even it will let you understand why God's name backward is dog. It will explain to you not only Anubis, but the origins of the Anunnaki. And actually, what the, the Dogen and many of the indigenous tribes on Earth were practicing and understood about their custodial purposes on the planet. And again, because it is a saga, you'll get like, okay, so what happened when the room, when one womb was split and earth became that other part of the womb that was somewhat distorted, the quarantine process, 
the sacrifice of the nomo. You'll actually see the entire story of Christianity in its truest form, how the nomo continuously sacrificed their genetics in order to perfect our genetics. You'll find the hunter, who's Orion, take precedence over its master, who is Sirius, and attempt to run the entire constellation system, which is what we're under now is Orion-based dominion. Uh, the easiest way to interpret Orion is actually looking at the, the V series that used to come on TV years and years ago to understand their fifth column and the back and forth wars of, you know, who's going to be in charge. You'll find characters such as Marduk come into center stage, uh, who's 50, actually not too different than 50 Cent, if you really understand what kind of energy, energies they're channeling and how destructive many of these energies that they've allowed to come into this constellation uh, are. And so it, it, you'll get a unified collection of knowledge that will be quite pleasing of, for you because it'll also give you more aspects of how we've gotten to this stage of the incarnation. And so this is Pleiades, uh, Aldebaran, Hades, Orion's belt, then down into Sirius, and then that alignment because we are to understand that when you're – obviously when, when you see what the stars are really doing, you'll see that there's connections with the third eye, you'll see there's connection between certain star systems, almost like a dot to dot, where you actually see the, the beam connect into another constellation. So in that, that's how you read out the story that is actually uh, presenting itself in the stars. And again, unfortunately, I don't have the time to really get into it. It's, a, it's an amazing mm -hmm. subject to me. I, I keep going back in that because Everything that it's serious, I would just say it like that. Um, but it, uh, the centerpiece of this, I, I would say, to why one should look into this work is because the mm -hmm. Dogen were capable of seeing Sirius B uh, and have works of exactly the procession in the orbit of Sirius B. And mm -hmm. Sirius B was not really discovered until, I believe, the 40s, I mean, when we mm -hmm. started getting our telescopes and things together. And so uh, they had knowledge of this. So because of that, uh, the research was done to see what else they were talking about. Maybe there was something more authentic about what they were saying uh, in their knowledge. And when you understand uh, spiritual knowledge and you're looking to decipher what's happening with systems today, like why they're even calling it ISIS, and, you know, why are people fighting ISIS now, and, you know, what ISIS's projection was as the divine feminine, the destruction of the divine, divine feminine through the hardening forces of the Abrahamic patriarchal traditions, which dry things out. This will show you why entire deserts are created when the women in those areas are repressed, right? So it shows you how mm. even to right. when organisms are treated a certain way, how they begin to communicate and they create the environment around them. So, you know, this also gives you the other 180 degrees that, you know, in the event that you begin to nourish the feminine forces that are in your reality, that's how you would create an abundant field. And you know how these fields can, you can use geometry in order to, in, in your structure of your home, in order to actually coalesce and condense this creative force and matter. You could lay under that creative force and matter and then have it project from your frontal lobe and then it's going right into a nesting field of nourishment for quicker manifestation. So, you know, I, I believe what happened here is, is that, and I'll just say this and then we'll get to the next question. I'm really just beginning I actually, I, what I experienced when I came with this knowledge is I experienced something that I actually wasn't fully aware of how it was working that strong, which in this tense was the Great White Brotherhood and their effects on watching every single person that's coming out that seems to be divinely inspired mm. and formulating things on the spiritual realm. This is not about internet. This is not about in that plane, but formulating things on the spiritual realm that thwart the progress of a person coming into total realization and beginning to link and unify with others all around the world and getting high levels of knowledge to them. And that was strictly because of, again, certain periods to where certain knowledge was unearthed. And there was a high, there is a high um, inclination for certain species here on earth to become the destroyers of the world. And in, in that they feel that they will find purpose. And I think that, that if you don't believe something like that, we have to examine just the whole idea of hunting anything. Like, mm -hmm. you know, how somebody would go on safari and hunt down this beautiful animal, right? Mm -hmm. And just mm -hmm. to show its strength, their strength and, you know, that I'm more crafty and I have more poetic. Right. So now Earth, as also Tiamat, who's 
you know, you would think about how as a large organism, it may be entertaining for certain groups to attempt to try to hunt that organism. But then when you think of Orion, Orion is the hunter. So, and then Sirius is the dog, but see the dog, when you understand the senses of a dog and the purpose of dogs, which are not actually dogs, they're jackals and wolves. Mm-hmm. Then you go back through the lineage and you got to figure out, well, where do they get human bodies from anyway? We got to connect the links. You know, where, where do the human bodies come from? And how you can tell as you look in the eyes, notice how the cats, cats have a different eye than lions because cats are snakes and, 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 and um, cats are snakes and basically birds and sna- or basically snakes and, and lions mixed together. OK, so the, even the 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 Kmetans are proving right there that they put two species that never get along naturally in nature genetically into the same body. And so you get this huge vo- these volumes and volumes of knowledge. Again, when you're looking at everything as alive and you're examining, well, where do we find where the soul comes from? Look in the eye, the eyes, the gateway to the soul. You'll see that. Things about the geometry, such as the, the pentagram that Venus traces out every eight years in the sky. So then you'll start realizing why they call the morning star, and then there's the Wiccan, and then they're you know, praying to Venus and Lucifer and all this. So all of that stuff just starts connecting, and it starts connecting when you're orientating yourself with the stars. And I would recommend for people, because of the right. epoch that we're uh-huh. living in, to check out the Sirius system. Robert Temple, Sirius Mystery will give you all the, the tidbits that you need to connect the dots. Oh, Literally. Thank you. <laughs> mm. Wow. Uh, great. Hopefully um, that you uh, receive uh, uh, a lot of uh, answers from and a lot of tidbits to help you uh, research more. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, obviously the, the sister is, is, is very precise, you know, and I would, mm-hmm. I, I would love to lend more time to really, you know, just get on yeah. that level of it because this is like, you know, this is not scholarly right now. This is all, you right. know, this is out there. But I did leave the references of the mm-hmm. scholarly mm-hmm. works right. to get, right. you know, 600, 700 pages of the details. <laughs> is there any other questions uh, up left? Yeah, a quick question. Uh, I got text. Have you ever read the Circle Seven Quran? And um, the next caller be a five six one five three six five six one five three six. Welcome to the Ringing Stone Network. Peace. Hi. How um, are you? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. You getting ready to answer his question? Yes. Go so, ahead. Uh, it, it only take a minute. Excuse me, but yeah, um, for the brother or the sister who asked the question, I actually didn't get a chance to read uh, the Noble Drew Ali's work. I did uh, look deeply into, obviously, the Morris knowledge. So, you know, I, I was able to draw, you know, my own benefits and my own conclusions from that. But just to answer the question directly, I, I haven't had the opportunity to read the Circle 7 Quran. I was really uh, honing in on the final Quran who, uh, by Rashad Khalifa because, you know, when I had my little vacation, I ran across a, a brother who was uh, the son of uh, – the mother, one of the mothers that was the first members of that community. And, and when I heard wow. what was going on with it, I knew I needed to get into to understanding what was really being said because this Quran was, was he basically died for this Quran. And, uh, mm-hmm. and that's the story. They now put it on Wikipedia, but he was, pers- they were pursuing him from the moment that he took this Quran from, uh, from the Arab countries and bought it to the United States. And it was forbidden to translate this Quran in English because if we remember Muhammad's miracle, was the Quran. And the reason why it was that way is because this Quran is numerically equivalent to the number 19 in the strangest ways. And even one of our supercomputers actually can't put something like this together and still hold a storyline. And what you'll find within the Quran is that it just basically reads different and it opens up different things. So just from the, from the Islamic tradition, I found that that was probably the book that Fatima was running away from the Khalifas with which gave them the power that they had to withstand themselves for the period of time in order to create the Sudanese uh, matriarchs uh, and strengthen the Sudanese matriarchs, which are really the foundation of how most species are, are here on the planet right now as far as humanoid is concerned. And those are the, the matriarchal mothers, and they generally have crescent moons branded on their forehead. I mean, it's, it's serious stuff, I and mean, they're responsible. They're the custodians in the wombs of the process that we're going through here of getting in and out of these worlds. 
Excellent. Thank you. Okay, Thank so, so you can go ahead with your question. Excuse me. All right. You shared so much. It was wonderful. <laughs> and, and you brought up the number 19, so now I wanted to ask you what's the significance of that. Uh, also, uh, do you uh, lead a study, uh, like a biblical study on Scripture so that we uh, get to understand the, the deeper things or the layers of it? Do you need something like that? What I've done is, is that over the, obviously this is six years, so over the six-year period, you'll find that I go through these phases. And um, what I do is I just basically report of everything that I'm experiencing in those spiritual phases. So when we drove through uh, the Christian fields, which I call the, the tetragrammic fields, when we drove through those areas, then you'll find those conversations around those areas are very centered around, you know, understanding or understanding, as we call it, the biblical tradition and where it really comes from and the key players within the tradition and, and where they pop up in more ancient traditions and what is the whole storyline, et cetera. And it, I can't say there's one exact body of work to refer to in relation to that. You really just, you know, have to go in which is going to be great, good anyway, because you, you'll get even more. You'll get more traditions. Uh-huh. You'll get a whole picture. Uh-huh. But you'll have to go uh-huh. into the archives that you see presented on, on, on YouTube and go back a little bit and check it out. And you'll notice within the titles also of the shows, because some are directly related to titles related to Christianity, and obviously you'll find things in that context there. Uh, simplified, the number 19 is actually um, 10, which is 1. It's a pioneering uh-huh. number. So basically anytime you're going to start something new, those are the, that's the form that you move in. And uh-huh. on the occult level, when the tongue touches the roof of the mouth 19 times, it opens up a specific gate. That's the first surah, that's, uh, the al-fatiha. And again, what you, this is, these are ancient traditions. So the modern person running into the, the fields of um, the dinger, which would be dealing with the, the igigi, those who man the ship, those are the primordial forms that actually are responsible for the motions of earth. So you got to ask yourself, <laughs> you know, what, what are you going to really want to say in there, you know, and what kind of conditions are you going to be subjecting yourself to? And, and obviously there's a lot of, um, I won't say a lot, but there's a, a few very dark cults that have attempted to penetrate this level of knowledge. And, uh, and it just it seems like it, it doesn't work out really well for them. So I, I believe what happens is, is that when we're studying something, we should probably, as advice, use the – the vessels and the vehicles that we've been given to tap into that study. So right now we're on the physical plane. There's a lot of it in the trees, right? That, that's why trees are always synonymous with wisdom, right? When you use the third eye, most trees and generally vines actually appear as snakes. Like you can actually see that they have something very serpentine with them. That's why knowledge is always related to the serpent as the the wise old serpent. And in fact, you'll realize the entire field in, one, in the deeper levels of the matrix, it's like the Naga and their traditions and, and, and on the matriarchs that come from that. And this is because if you look in science, you'll find that the reptilian, there's a specific word, but it, it's basically the reptilian gene is the carrier for the mammalian gene and other more advanced genes. So this means when you're actually going through the process of creating more complex life forms, you start with the base of a reptilian genome. And you build from there because it makes up a, it's basically a great foundation. And if you notice that the reptilian genes, like the crocodile, it just doesn't change. So when you look at this whole kind of ideology, even of many of the ancient ancestors, for better or for worse, they have this unchanging, unmovable kind of attitude going on all the time. And that's where that comes from. And some of us can call that the gift and some of us can call that the curse. And we, because we have the ability to move through, you know, the Aquarian part of our mind, which is more magnetic, the electric or L side of the consciousness, which is a, a more of a hissing and a spitting or electric serpent type of aspect of our consciousness. And then we are always blending those two fields, which creates an electromagnetic field around us. And so what we find is even on an energetic level, we find that there's a connection. And then on... Um, a biological level between the bird and the snake, that's actually the entire genome of the species because, as you'll see, if you read, the birds evolve, excuse me, serpents eventually evolve into birds. Scales become feathers. 
you know, look at the chicken. The chicken was was used to be the tyrann- the, the closest ancestor, Rus was the closest ancestor of the Tyrannosaurus. Mm-hmm. So this is how you can read the timeline, really, like logically, like not getting yourself off on some alien tangent from Aldebaran, but actually really <laughs> seeing what's known. And then what actually starts opening up, and I'll say this, you know, because it has to be known, is that, hey, there's somebody else that knows here because and knows all of it, <laughs> not just what you're trying to learn, but a lot mm-hmm. more mechanics. Because anytime you build something like a Hedron Collider or, you know, anytime you're even dealing with, if monatomics even came here, you know, all the monatomics were patent. If you, any of those kind of elements, if they've already really been discovered, the potential for healing, the energetic potential, which is big to us, it's actually energy that is assimilable for a biological life form. This means things that can turn your clock back, regenerate you. If all those things are real things, which they are, and we only need to understand mechanics that knowledge is available now on, like when you cut a root, you know, how you can sustain it hermetically so that it doesn't really die. You know, Mm -hmm. synthesis, Mm -hmm. this is how you can take like pounds and pounds of bark and synthesize it all the way down into a couple grams of a white powder that will do different things, you see. So it's the knowledge is here. It's just in many tenses, it's lacking that creative mind that knows how to connect the dots with it. Like this stuff is just not going to be used for a weapon or, you know, used for some flavoring on a food or whatever. It actually has the potential to do great things. So I see for sure that the World Cup is definitely uh, half full. That why we have, may think we've gone far, we're just getting started. Right. And and that's the real thing. And now this continuum to tell the brother, you know, that I spoke today about, you know, being an elder and becoming an ancestor, those books like the Robert Temple, the serious mystery, like you got to realize that you got hundreds and hundreds, thousands and thousands of pages of knowledge. All of it. I don't care what color you are about your ancestors uh-huh. that have never been published. And you have uh-huh. only certain people in this case, he kind of explains to you very briefly how he became a Mason and then why, you know, he didn't really use his Masonry. But even for him to mention it, he's still telling you, he's still a Mason. And these kind of people are privy to certain levels of knowledge that they only even transmit amongst themselves if you're at a certain degree. And then those who are just looking for personal accolades like this guy, then he's going to, you know, stay out of it from a level of not allowing it to hinder his money. And so he's making his money because he's telling, he's pulling this knowledge and getting a hold of these books, and he's giving the knowledge right to you. So that, that's the thing. That's why. But if I said to myself, well, I don't listen to, quote, unquote, white people, then uh-huh. you see what I mean? I will just be cheating myself out of my own knowledge. So uh-huh. the thing uh-huh. is, is that all of this, it belongs to all of us. And what we have is we have a few people that actually don't know it, can't tap into its full potential. No more than... A human can understand a prey mantis. You have to put yourself into the mode. You have to be able to change your language. Notice how, and we're coming to a close here, the whole disturbance that you're seeing in the Abrahamic tradition actually begins with the confusion of language. It says, go to, let us go down and confuse their language. Okay, this is basically Marduk, who's Orion, talking to some of the disagreeables about coming down and creating language to get everyone off of cymatics and the Uh, universal language that we're uh, communicating in within the language and the tongue that we're speaking, which doesn't allow time to affect us. That's how we became immortal, because if we want to get something done, it doesn't take any time to do it. We just move through the evocation of the actual tones and vibrations, pulling it up from the root of the body. That's how our, mm-hmm. our, our language, you, you weren't coming from the palate. We were coming from the vibe, the, the sole of the feet. And then we would basically whip it from the pot, bottom of our body all the way to the top and then let it come through birth through our mouth, which is another birth canal. And then we would bring it right into the world. And if you were in tune or on the blue lotus, <laughs> either way, you would see it, what would come out after that. And that's why some people need to realize that there are still substances right now that when you take those substances, when people talk, you can see what comes out of their mouth and what they're saying. So with those same substances, you know, I go 130 times in, I examine every single element. I don't care what people think anymore because I don't mix my equation with other people's equations in the matrix. 
Mm. When I go into the matrix, I use the coding and the program of the matrix to, so I can always get the response that I'm looking for. And I'm always premeditated because I move with purpose. Now, when it comes with the innerverse, I don't let these two worlds come together because the innerverse is unique. It's unique to you. So what parallax you're on and what constellation you're pointed to and what energies you're vibing with that day is in many cases going to be different than what's going on in the matrix. And the main thing I want to tell people to, to now that we're coming, you know, it's at the 30 minute point is, re- point is remember you are an inventor. You are a creator. Naturally you have this ability and you do it all the time, except for your wombs, which are all the holes in your body are being used to create things that actually are bringing about not only the destruction of yourself, but also the destruction of others. So when you flip that 180 degrees, which evil flipped 180 degrees is good. When you flip it 180 degrees and you start really seeing the power of what you're doing, and then you start changing those intentions with the realization that how things start is not where you can see them first. It starts in an invisible plane. Like even the process that you should understand is even coming into this world, these two forces, that's why I like to use the term evil when we're talking about distortion and we're talking about negativity on the, I mean, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even use the word negative, excuse me. When we're talking about Mm -hmm. distortion and and foolishness, we should use the term evil. Now, when you're talking about negative, Mm -hmm. negative is something on the other side of a battery. And if you don't have that, then you don't have power. So realizing, you know, positive and negative within the body and getting those two forces working together in order to, you know, move with the back, the forth, the up, the left, the right, you know, being able to move your vehicle. So, you know, there's a bit of a tangent there, but it's just letting people know that as much as I can do, like what I only thing that I can do right now is I can simply send and I got to do it through English, the power and the intentions of what I'm really telling you through these words. I have no agenda. I and mean, I don't know who you are, may not even know you're on the line. You, you could just sneak right by me. So the thing is, is that if you're getting this knowledge and this knowledge is for you, the only thing that mm-hmm. I can do is explain to you in a way like, hey, this is something that you really should get a hold to. And this is something that is real. It has changed my life. It has changed thousands of people's lives that I've seen around me. Mm-hmm. And it still is yet to be fully cracked open. We're just exploring this. But also remember, mm-hmm. like a scale, you got zero in the middle and then you got the negatives all the way down to negative five, let's say. And then on the right side, you got the positive, all the way up to positive five. Many of us are in the negative five, negative fours, negative three. So even when we're changing our diet, even when we're getting around the right people, we're just moving up through the negatives. We haven't even got at zero yet. So many times, mm. don't expect to see something until you really, really drop something out of your cargo, get ready to kick on your vessel and power out of this because it's all energy. You got to use your energetic field of your body. And so if you're always negative, then you're just going deeper into the vortex. But then when you get into the positive, positive one, positive two, positive three, that's when you start seeing the rewards behind what you're actually doing. And not until then. So what I do is is I put my head down and I run as hard as I can. And then when I feel like I'm making some progress, I look up. And it's been six years now. And this message, like you could go back to stuff from the beginning. I was still doing this. I had a, even a moment the other day where I had finally listened to one of my own recordings because I just, I don't even have time to listen to my own stuff. I mean, what am I going to be doing in there? But I was listening to one in the bathroom and I was like, you know what, this is good. So I took it on to the gym and I found myself going through this workout without ever even remembering that I was even working out because I was actually powering myself on my own words. And then my oversoul said, see, you have to let it do for you. Mm. What it has done for so many now, and because mm. that's that's your harvest on this seventh. This is my seventh year. You know, I will hope to take a rest from just this, and to mm-hmm. get into other things. And that's the other things I said. Okay, you know what? What problem is everyone having in the reality right now? Finances. I mean, except for the right. rich people, and they got other problems. Right. They're coming to me about other things, and we can deal with that. That's mental and spiritual. But most people are experiencing the financial issue because. It's a, it's a double-edged sword out there. You can go and work mm-hmm. in a field that literally pulls karma, just creates karma for you. It's like, how mm-hmm. do you finally get to the point of working with something that actually generates energy? The thing is, we had to create that. And that's actually what Spirit Text is. We created mm-hmm. a system to where 
we're now beginning to manufacture. This is 2017. We're manufacturing the things that actually bring health and bring wellness to people. But in addition to that, we're teaching people how to manufacture. How do you file for patents? How do you know what's a good idea? You're not going to go sell ice cream in Alaska. But then how do you connect that to your divine purpose and then allowing it to, to propel you? And then also giving them, because this is, you know, that could be any seminar you go to, but giving them the throughput to where if you come correct, if you're really about what you say you are about and you can create something, we can get it to the people. You can use us to get it to people. If you are a, a motivational speaker and you have something unique, you've had something go on in your life to where it's taking you to a level to where you can explain to people and encourage them, then we can get you into a life coaching thing. You can coach people that are, 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 are looking at my message and, and, and want to uh, enjoy what I'm doing because that's how you work it. That's how it happens. But it don't happen with us just sitting back here talking about the problem. And I've seen a lot of that. And the more problems that are happening, the more there is to talk about. But at the end of the day, the king and the pawn, they go back in the same box. So this means that after this whole thing closes itself down, and it will, then it will just be silent. So where are we going to be in that? I'm going to be at the party with the ancestors that made the right decisions and all the people that was actually up there and with me on this plane. That's where I'm going to be because that's what my will is. And my will is Mm -hmm. unbreakable. So remember, Mm -hmm. the will, that's the zodiac. You're not just one zodiac sign. You're an entire cosmos. So it behooves you to figure yourself out right now. We have these life coaching things where we go through life paths. Figure out, you know, what is your whole story right now? So you can see the blueprint in what you're trying to accomplish and then accomplish that. And then once you do that, then you read about the other life paths, the other blueprints. And then you then learn how to communicate with people. Like you know that if this person is a life path too, that they only respond to a certain level of communication. So you don't go in there with what you want to say. Mm -hmm. You go in there with how you should say it. Because why? You're looking to get results not only for them but also for yourself. And this is how you have success. One of the last things. Go back to Napoleon Hill. The What is it? The the science of prosperity? Let me check this real quick. Because the thing is, if you don't have a father, you didn't have a grandfather to actually sit you down and actually tell you, hey, son, hey, daughter, this is how the matrix works, the science of personal achievement. All these systems that you see out right now, Tony Robbins and these kind of guys, these are children compared to Napoleon Hill. They were calling Napoleon Hill to fix the entire country when everyone was making on a run on the bank when they brought Truman in. I mean, this is, these are people who they have systems that's tried and tested. And then when you listen to it, you'll find that actually what's being said is deeper than metaphysics. It has way more applications in the matrix if you really think about it. It's just nobody told you, hey, go listen to the science of personal achievement and get that in your foundation first. And then, you know, move forward from there, because many of us, we don't have the luxury of just diving into the spiritual aspects of things and the conspiracies. We have to come back into this world and not only be very successful, but also be utilized in guiding people and allowing them to become stronger because that is our purpose. So I'm not, I'm, it, I got this thing. I say it's not on my watch. I don't care if this is illegal to say. I don't care if it's blasphemy. I don't care if any of that. If the numbers come back and the blueprint says that that's what should be said, then that's what Seven's going to be doing. Because at the end of the day, if you move with truth, see, truth, when all this goes away, that's why I say, at the end of the illusion, what will remain will be truth. All the illusionary stuff is going to fade away, and then you're only going to just see truth. So if you be truth, that means when the illusion is gone, you'll still be there. And that's how I operate. And I know that now because I can find it in anything. Like when the brother was saying, what's the as above, so below. I can go all the way down into looking at the geometry of the plant leaf. I can go into looking at the chemical, the color that's coming from the chemical. I can go into all these things. Like you got master teachers like Layla, Layla Africa you know, breaking down the whole thing about the, cos- the cosmos within your body and the, the elements that vibrate. You know, we sat down for three or four days, me and my wife, just putting together all of the, what he was saying, you know, because it's important. And then when you start thinking about the future, don't think AI and don't think VR and all this stuff ain't coming and somehow your idea of not liking it is going to stop it. I think that's what people thought, the old <laughs> people thought about the computer. The truth is, can you create virtual reality games for children that actually teach them entirely the aspects of geometry and their purpose and their story? 
in a market that is $16 billion strong with a 1% or 2% saturation, meaning that anything basic you throw out there will get in front of hundreds of thousands of people. You know, it's like the same techniques. Like when, That's why I started open source spirituality because it was open source, just the concept of open source that was defeating all these companies that have been filing patents and, and creating products that you could not even create your own thing with, right? So then open source comes and says, hey, everyone can improve on this. You can, I can mm-hmm. have an open source program, and you can come in. If you find a problem, you can help me fix that program. And then we have something in common beside money, which is knowledge, which is more valuable than money, productivity, functionality, what creates actual money. And then at the end of the day, we also have to realize that our motivation, our power, and our passion has to be diverted into the progress of our soul and not finances. Because finances, what's going to happen when you get a lot of money then? You're going to be dead then. You're going to be depressed because that's going to be the end of the road. So we have to learn how to power ourselves on the process and the progress of our souls and, our, and the unification of our spirit with our soul force. And to realize that at the end of all this, we all are a collective. That's when, and that's the beginning. That's something that can happen for you now. I pull from the collective energy of all of us, and I cycle with that energy, and I contribute to that energy no matter what it looks like, no matter what kind of geometry is shaped like, what kind of face it's got on it today. It doesn't matter to me. If it's something that we can begin to utilize and benefit from, from learning more of self, Mm -hmm. then it will fulfill what I feel like is the highest maxim, all is self. And the Mm -hmm. only thing that time is, is the period that it takes for us to figure that out. And that's all I have to say. If people want to check me out, I'm at secretenergy.com. 2017, we're coming hard. I'm kind of on retirement right now, like for a moment (laughs) on the seventh day, as I said, you know, he rests a little bit, but meaning that I just, I pulled everything back from just going on shows and all that stuff, uh, like nine, nine to five. And just to structure everything properly to bring success for everyone that has been following the network and those that want to get involved in 2017. And we're doing all the heavy lifting. This means I'm not going to send you in there trying to figure out something that is basically impossible for a person to do at the basic level. We're getting those heavy lifters, those people who know about all this stuff already, to make it easier for mm-hmm. everyone. Mm-hmm. Okay. There oh, man, brother, 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 man, good brother. True words have never been spoken, man. We really appreciate you coming out of retirement and, 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 and indulging us with this knowledge and uh, <laughs> trying to funnel us into the right place. <laughs> no doubt, brother. Yeah. I mean, it was more than a pleasure. I'm glad you you know, got in touch with me, and obviously we got some more building to do. Most definitely. And um, definitely everyone listening, please, please uh, check out Spirit Tech because we're talking about finances and growing uh, group economics and health prosperity, and that's something that uh, we all should be a part of, you know, to, to fuel this this ship that we're uh, taking into the next uh, dimension and, and, and to, greater, uh, to greater space. Uh, and check out secretenergy.com. Uh, check out all the resources, the mass, 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 tons of resources that are there. Um, and, in, and get into the university and check out do some self-knowledge and dive deep, dive deep. Um, but, yeah, uh, Brother Seku, would you like to close? Are you there, brother? We'll see cool. If not, well, while getting, we, yeah. might be trying to get yeah, you his mute button right now. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, brother Seven and, and brother Haru, I want to thank y'all. Uh, both of y'all, y'all contributed to give a great, great show. And thanks to the people that asked the questions. Uh, please remember the Ringing Stone Network and Sound the Ringing Stone Network. We're here like six, seven days a week. So remember, um, Sundays we do law. And then we're doing the trust thing on Monday and really getting a good response thing on learning trust. And it looks like trust is going to be one of the hottest things for next year that people are really trying to delve into trust and equity. Um, We're going to do, on Tuesdays, we're going to get into some violent flames. And I got a sister, 87 years old, ready to kick it with our our health show on Tuesdays. Uh, Wednesdays, we're going to have a variation of things, but that week before the 22nd, I got I got people lined up from the 18th to the 21st, right in December. So we're going to get into variations of what is our story at Christmas and not just the Jingle Bells and Santa Claus, which is going to be a great, great thing. And with that, you know, I yield the floor to you, brothers, and thanks a lot. Peace. Seven, you will hear from me. And Brother Haru, I'll see you next weekend because I'll be down there next Friday in Columbia, it looks like. Oh, it's the answer. Oh, beautiful. 
Uh, brother Seven, to give you the last words to take us on out, brother. Thank you. Well, for sure. I just want to say wholeness and balance vibrations to everyone. And uh, and thank you for unifying. I mean, this is a, a major thing to me. It's very important. And, you know, I feel the connection. I just want, you know, as we go away from this call to remember it's recorded so you can go back and go through it, but to feel extremely motivated and to know that, you know, even the children, like, you know, that's what I always put my faith and my trust in to know that there's we get stronger and stronger, we get smarter and smarter. So let's just be there for each other. Wholeness. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can be confusing. Like Swedish techno confusing. Bok, bok, meow, meow. Dance with me, purple cow. Bok, bok, meow, meow. Ooh, you lovely cow. Geico makes it easy. With 24-7 access, all you have to do is go to Geico.com and you could save money on car insurance. It just makes sense. Unlike, you know. Dance with me, purple cow. I like your mood. Dear pesky blackheads, you disgust me. You're ugly, dirty, and just plain nasty. Enough is enough. Meet my Biore Deep Cleansing Charcoal Pore Strip. This strip, with natural charcoal, will pluck you out. Oil, too. Sayonara, blackheads. See ya on the Biore Strip side. Sincerely, finally clean pores. Love charcoal? Also try Biore Baking Soda Cleansing Scrub for an exfoliating deep clean. Biore. Free your pores.